Greetings, family. This is Bomani Taimba and Kala Genesis. And family, we're here with you on another live. And we're here to this, uh, you know, get right into it, get into the mix. And tonight our subject is Africans in the diaspora contribution to the uplifting and development of the African continent. <coughs> live once again, family, with Bomani and Kala Genesis. Greetings, my brother. How are you? I'm doing great, man. You know, I love the, the, my favorite thing is seeing that live button pop up there. You know, I feel like my home, that red live button, you know, you know, <laughs> absolutely. You know, you know, how we do it. Uh, and the goal is to get into these um, important conversations. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a quick share. You know, I always got to share our wonderful flyer that we have our incredible, wonderful six African country tours coming up. And I always want to make sure that uh, we let everybody know that when you're ready to reconnect to the African experience, connect with us at africafortheafricans.org. And just make this a little smaller. You go right there, perfect. So that's it, family. That's all of our contacts, all of our social media information as far as this, uh, access to pictures, videos, and just you know, seeing what we do as a people. Uh, right there, that's that list right there. Tanzania, no November coming up, Ghana, then Senegal and Gambia, then back to Ghana. Then we have our incredible Liberia, July 20th to the 30th, 2023 journey of a lifetime. I know Kala is ready for that. We're on this incredible recruiting uh, going on as, as we build that connection now with Liberia. And Kala is excited because, you know, he's like, I've been telling people about Liberia for so long. So as we, we're going to still even use some of this conversation to talk about Liberia as we always do, because, uh, you know, we're looking to this connect with different countries and we recommend other people do the same. That way we have a good 10 countries in Africa where we can, you know, you know do consistent business with from the diaspora as far as this you know, general business to this living and doing business this in the different countries. All right, so back to our schedule. Uh, then later on after that, then we got uh, Tanzania, and then we end with uh, South Africa, 2023. So those are the journeys that we have from November 2022, which is a few months from now, and it goes all the way to January of 2022. <coughs> So family, that's six incredible countries along all of these journeys. Two, two more remaining for this year and then an incredible five tour schedule next year, which covers the six countries. So yes, family, that is the journey of a lifetime information. And, and if you're looking for any other information, family, as far as our Black Star Pan-African community, that information is also on our website. And what we like for people to do more and more is to make sure that you take time Go to the website, click on a relative link, read the details, you know, write down some questions, you know, reach out to me so we can talk and we just get you connected. And uh, we have conference calls on a regular basis for Africa tours and investments. All right, my brother Kala. So yes, you are ready for the Liberia journey for a lifetime. Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I'm, you know, you know, my experience of just uh, traveling to Africa for the last 18 years and then covering 10 countries, nine of those countries which have um, done tours. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, it's uh, sometimes you lose count of the countries that you travel to and things like that. Uh, so uh, <coughs> throughout the time of me traveling to the different countries, you know, what I've seen, brother, and everything I'm going to talk right now is going to be based on experience and based on my analysis. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so, and I'm letting people know that, you know, Anyone want to, you know, want to communicate with us or want to join us or, you know, whether it's debate or communicate with us, let us know. And then, we you know, we'll literally just uh, invite you in and you can, you know, we can talk respectfully and things like that. Uh, so definitely just uh, send us a message uh, in the chat box and we'll post the invitation link uh, soon. Also, once we get more into the conversation. But the main thing I've seen is I've seen a lot of good energy from the African diaspora, mainly the Africans in America, like born Africans in America or you know, African-Americans, literally going to different countries, traveling, 
looking to this find their way to connect, uh, contributing to the highest level and being a part of the building and development uh, to the highest level. And I will say a lot more can and could and should be done to make it simpler, easier, smoother for us to connect more and build what we need to build on the continent, which is you know basically just organize ourselves as best as possible and build with the best of our people there in whichever country and literally compete uh, th just to get right to the point. Uh, but it's never that simple when you have visionless leaders and you have uneducated people. And the same goes for, you know, it's a mutual situation. It's not just talking about Africa, it's talking about the diaspora. But in this situation, most of what we're talking about is our connection. Uh, I've seen a lot of people give up a whole lot to leave their career, leave, you know, you know, leave a, leave everything that they have built in America and, you know, for a greener pasture to enjoy the life amongst your own people. And in, in most cases, I'll say a lot of those things have turned out well, you know, because that because I know people that cover all aspects of it, the people that it has worked out well for that have planned. And then the people who even though they have planned, they've been victim of our own people there on the African continent, you know, shaking them down, you know. And then the money is not going, the money that's being shaken down is not going to development. It's just money that's being chopped and just used, you know, for maybe basic survival or just wasting or whatever, you know, but at least that's what you're hoping that that's going to happen. And I'm talking about in the world of real estate development, the world of you looking to move, build business and things like that. You know, so what I'm always recommending that most of our people do when they leave from here and go to Africa don't run away from your own people from the diaspora. Don't say, I'm going there to live with the people. We understand you're going to there live with the people. We all going there to live with the people. But at the same time, too, you also have people from the African diaspora that have moved there. And you and them have a lot in common. You grew up in the same struggle. You have, you have the similar culture. you know. And together, you know, I'm telling people you band together because you have to, because wherever you go, you know, and people like myself know that directly. You know, I've been traveling around the world since, you know, uh, 1920 year, a 19, 20 year mark, you know, over for the last uh, 20 plus years, uh, <coughs> three countries, uh, six continent and doing a lot of studies and histories and, and, and how our people, you know, how our people operate around the world. And, you know, and the simple thing always is to always understand all of our people, wherever they go, have their own culture. So you from one place, can't necessarily just give up all of your culture to just learn your own other brother's uh, culture. You know, it's, it's, it's never a simple thing to deal with. You know, and like some people say, well, you know, your, your, your customer base is English, so you should learn English. And then some people may say, well, you're coming to my country, you should learn my language. You know, so you're not saying one is right or one wrong, one is wrong. I'm always saying that we just as a people have to figure it out. But what I, what, I, what we're not going to let people do is make it seem like we, us from the African diaspora, many of those of us who are here living in America are coming to Africa to, to take advantage of people on the African continent. To me, that's just nonsense. You know, that that that, that, that foolish guy, Ferris said that, that's always talking all that stuff. Um, don't know a lick about anything. You know, a lot of times he runs his mouth. He have even disrespect my uh, Africa for the Africans banner and put Africa is not for Africans and have my same banner change the words around and things like that. And, uh, you know, he has said some, some, you know, some disrespectful stuff towards the movement that's, you know, we're on and everything, you know, you know, he has, a, you know, he has, is, you know, he has a right to his own opinion. No, no doubt about that. You know, but when he's just gossiping and not doing any research, making it seem like our people are going to Africa to take advantage of people in Africa. That's nonsense. You know, what I've seen is a whole lot of contributions and a whole lot of sacrifice. I'm, you know, I'm literally just commend a lot of our people who have given up everything they have given up, you know, and things that, and in, instead of that, uh, instead of that coward, literally, you know, doing research or even making a move to learn about Africa, all he does, he's like an armchair revolution. He's like the definition of an armchair revolution. <laughs> We're old school dusty ass records in the back. All the you talk about that guy Ferris said that. As a matter of fact, I want to <laughs> let me. I mean, it, it's it's a comedy show. I mean, it's like he never stops. And then you have other people 
like literally, you know, literally just preach the elder, of love. elder, preach elder. Yo, this, yo, this let me tell you something. And, and, uh, and things about it, just because you're an old person don't mean you're elder and don't mean that you're wise. I mean, it's not, no not old, old, uh, uh, not. our elders. You know, yeah. it, it's, 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 it's a situation about growth. And you can't stay here from America and run your mouth about Africa and never have a passport in your life and never been anywhere and never been to Africa and sit there as an armchair revolution and run your mouth for literally, you know, literally, you know, 40, 50 years of your life. You know, one day, one day he's going to do a live and he's going to be in his, in his armchair and he's just going to. You have his fucking, uh, he's going <laughs> to just gonna keel over and die when that. What well, girl? Bring yeah. That. So, you know, the thing of it is, um, and I want people to commend and respect what we as a people have done from this country living here in America and make our move in Africa as far as all we have done, you know, from building literally this from, from hotel, different business factory, corporations. Um, I mean, I don't know what we have not gotten ourselves into, but yeah. we have a better chance to do a lot more if we would get more of a welcome connection and things like that, because we're going to be the only true people and I would even go far as say this to even put it in the simplest terms for people. If people look at the African continent and look at every single people or person that, that are coming into the African continent, you know, you have to think about all of the races and nations of people, all of the colonization and exploitation that's going on. The black <clears throat> folks in the African diaspora has been the least harmless people or the or 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 propose or pose. As the least harm, you know, and, and thing. And I would say also to flip it the opposite way and say we're there with the truest nature of your heart. We don't have the billions of dollars like China to just do investments. But what you're doing is you're doing things on a grassroots level. You know, this, you know, the schools I've seen go up and 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 sponsor shit and investments and in students and their, their you know their career and exchange programs and you know it's you now commend our people because. It's a hard journey, brother, having to just leave what you have built and a whole different continent in North America to return to the African continent that you have stolen from. You have to give up a whole lot. There's a lot has to go into it. So I don't see how people will go through all of that to go there and exploit their own African people when you have your own people here in America to exploit mm -hmm. um, and things like that. But uh, people have to look at the word that they use, exploit and colonizer. Like I hear, I hear these clowns calling you a colonizer, you know. And I'm sure my name is in it because you and I are always doing videos. Either I know you do videos right. of other people, and things like that. You know, people have to look at the word colonizer and things like that, and look at the word exploitation and really analyze it. Because you know, loose lips sink ships. You know, people quick to just run them out. You know, um, you know. So, Kala, you know, I've said enough. And I've done a nice little introduction to get things going. And I'll cover some of the basic things that you and I have been talking about over the period of time as we include Africa stand and we explain to people, it's no disrespect, it's this, and we're showing people and analyzing things and explaining that this is the reason why we need to build communities and also why, you know, whenever we get a chance to make that move and we have territories that are in the world that we could be given to as stolen Africans, who are looking to build a level of sovereignty so they can be self-determined, you know? And whether it's a direct part of the African continent or extension or whatever, you know, you still want to build, have your own aspects of how you want to work your culture of how things run. Because you, you know, you're talking about a group of people, a group of peoples, if you're talking about African diaspora from different countries and different cultures that are unique, you know, you know, from music, heart, history, revolution, and so on, important history. And that's one of the things I'm always explaining that I appreciate the people who leave from America and they build <coughs> institutions in Africa where part of the education system is we're sharing the history of us as a people <coughs> from the African diaspora, how we got here and what we had to do to survive and what we're looking to do for the future. Very important story uh, since you know this conversation affects so much of us, you know, uh, who consider themselves black slash African. Uh, so brother Kala, my brother Scala, you know, based on all the things I've said, I know you took mental notes, you know, go ahead and address some of those and then you and I can just go back and forth on some things. Okay. How you doing folks? My name is Kala Genesis, chief host of the Voice of the Call Nation radio show on DeVille Radio, Wednesday nights, 11 p.m. Eastern. 
I'm also one of the founders of the Black African Infrastructure Organization who believes in land infrastructure nationhood. And the end game is an African, which is a nation and a homeland or territory for the African, stolen Africans on the African continent uh, to heal. And what you were saying in, in the last points was very, we all have different experiences, right? Um, what's happening is this, the African American experience, right? The diaspora experience, which is tied up in the phrase Africa for Africans and all the stuff we do, the black revolutionary, is something unique to the black people who were torn from their land and brought on slave ships, you know? The, when did we become uh, Africans? As soon as we were all chained together on those slave ships. That's when the black, that's where Pan-African was born, on those slave ships, you know? There's an old African proverb, men tied together or chained together are brothers. So in other words, on those slave ships, right? Whether you came from the Congo, Niger Delta, Biafra, whether you came from the Brighter Benin, Slave Coast, whatever. When you were packed on that slave ship, right, you knew one thing. The man up there was white, and you were all down here. That, and it was a, what was a peer becomes apparent that when you went to these white man's land, all these white people walk around free, and everybody looked like you looked in chains. So it became apparent that people start forming alliances. Now, there were some dumb Negroes over there among <laughs> us, right, who thought that, yo, I, I was an enemy. Uh, and all that was gone. Once you see, once you are taken out of African soil, all the stuff that you once knew in Africa is gone. You are now part of this this struggle, you know. You were landless, you know. And uh, let me tell you something about the, the thing about being landless, right? We've been landless for four hundred years, right? Their people, the Jews, were landless for five for two thousand years. You know what I'm saying? You know they kept all like that. So finally, when they built the state of Israel, they said, "Never again. We're never going to lose this territory again." And 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 how does this happen? It's happened by letting people in and infiltrate. Next thing you know, they get usurped. Jews were driven out of the palace, the, the territory, the Holy Land for a thousand years. Right now, the Kurds, they're they're they are a landless people, you know. Being a landless people, just the black people in America are landless, right? But we think we're Americans, you know. The, the America tells us we're Americans, but tell us we're US. Yeah, we're US citizens, right? But we're a minority group. Now, those of us who believe like we believe, like that we're landless, right, are nationalists. We believe that basically uh, the black people in North America, right, there's no more discussion that we are landless people, right? And so we approach America as not as like, okay, we're uh, American, loyal America, we're U.S. citizens. There's a difference. If I say I'm American, that means that I have allegiance and loyalty to America. And basically I'm saying to my ancestors, your pain and suffering didn't matter. I can never do that. I can never look at my ancestors and say, you know, what they, the white man did to our ancestors, enslaved them and stripped them of culture and everything and brutalized them and made themselves rich and everything. The white people, the white race was poor. Our labor made them rich, you know? And so we can't forgive that. There's no forgiveness for it. There's no coming back from that. And so what you see right now is a meltdown in America. As more and more black people start figuring this out, right? They're saying, what the hell are we doing? You know, what are we holding on to? You know, and the whole thing is this, like we've discovered in BIO years ago, what keeps us in America? It's not the the, uh, uh, the land because African land is beautiful. It's not um, uh, anything in America in particular. It's the infrastructure. America got us with their infrastructure. They got roads. They got highways. They got subways. They got medical systems, all stuff like this. Let me give you an example. The, why do you think they the first place they brought the European immigrants to was New York City? Why? Because when they brought them to Ellis Island, right, they saw that big, giant statue, bigger than anything they've seen in Europe. When they saw the George Washington Bridge, they saw these big, giant Empire State Building, tall buildings. They saw these big steamships. It made them, it humbled them and made them realize, shit, I'm not shit. I'm coming to the best land in the world. See, now... New York City is not the shining hill on city. You got buildings in Malaysia and um, Indonesia and Singapore that tower over the Empire State Building. You got big, tall buildings around the world. So it's not the same thing. The only people that are still trapped in this America, still the last uh, uh, frontier. We're still like we're in 100 years ago. You know, 100 years ago, our ancestors had no choice. Most of the country world was underdeveloped. There were no big cities in Asia. There were no big, there was no prototype cities around the world that you go about. So therefore, yeah, it, it seemed like it was the best thing that you're trying to make uh, integrate into America. 
Now there's no excuse. We did a show Saturday showing that they're building the future. They're building smart cities all over the world. So this is a time for the black man. If you're in, call yourself a nationalist, think, you know, okay, uh, if we want to be free, or we want to be free, we want sovereignty and everything, are you capable of building a nation of your own? Can you do that, right? I, I didn't know that, right? And then I studied, right? And also, this is when we were talking about Liberia. This is why it's so important for us to defend Liberia. This is why I'm defensive and I go after anybody who will keep trying to discredit Liberia, like this Pharaoh Sadat character. Liberia was a perfect example of black people, black men who built a republic that still stands. They just celebrated the 175 years of Liberia being a republic. Well, 175 years of a country. So it was built by black men. It wasn't colonized by Europeans. There were no European settlers on there. It was completely built by from the ground of every brick, every street, every law was written by black men. The constitution, everything was written by black men. So with the Liberia, as I studied Liberia over the years, how they was able to keep their sovereignty, how they had diplomatic missions, how they could uh, uh, was the founding or founding members of the League of Nations and the UN and all these other places, how how they had uh, uh, helped Africa in its quest for independence. At Liberia uh, uh, basically uh, helped Nelson Mandela, Kwame Nkrumah, Patrice Mola, Kenneth Kaunda, all these people studied in Monrovia. Nami Ezekiel, first president of Liberia, wrote a book about Liberia, how it inspired him to be, uh, Liberia was the inspiration behind the independence movement in Africa. So when people get up on here and start talking about uh, at Liberia being a colony and colonizing everything, they're nothing but a bunch of liars and ignorant. Now, if you don't want to go to Africa, you don't want to uh, like that, that's fine. But what I am going to not going to tolerate is people lying, you know, lying. And then you know better because we've done shows on Dining Show with Sister Carl and all these people talk about the, the true history of Liberia. And we got focus on Liberia. We got people out there that tell you, but people still want to run with the narrative. Oh, Liberia's colonized. Why? Because it's entertaining, because it's funny. It's all this kind of nonsense. Let me tell you something, folks. We have people going to the continent, putting their life savings and everything on the line. And when you're on the air uh, uh, just uh, mocking them and being silly and 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 uh, controversial and all this kind of nonsense and everything, just for, so you remember something. There's never going to be any statue made for no content creator on YouTube. Okay? The white man could come and take your YouTube channel any day and everything like that. You'll be asked out. You have to go out there and get a real job in the world. So, we're, like I said, we're not going to do is sit here and, and throw shots because we will shoot back, you know. So the problem is this. Um, where we are talking about uh, uh, building globally, not means everybody has to go to Africa, but Africa is one part of us becoming a global independent people. Now, if you basically like this, there's two types of black people. There's black people that say that we're tied to America and everything. That's the people that say, yeah, we can't, we got too much invested in Africa. Niggas ain't got shit. They don't own a house. They don't own anything in America. We got too much tied in America. Okay, where do you got tied? Where's the communities? All your communities are full of violence. The black communities, right, that we once had and everything are gone. The majority of black middle class do not live in majority black communities for the most part anymore. They're always living in separate enclaves and everything adjacent to the white communities and everything. Or they live in mixed race communities. That's the majority of black America right now. You know, as soon as somebody gets money, a good job, they're out of there. They're like, so there's no community. And what is a community? Communities where people commune. We have black neighborhoods and areas, but those are not communities. Black people have not experienced community since the, community since the 1960s. There was a community there. There was young and old, rich and poor. When you have a community, you have everybody. You have role models. A person on the street could see somebody that's a doctor, and you guys are going to the same church. You go walking into the same stores. You're rubbing elbows with people like this. Now we have black people who are uh, completely uh, uh, distanced from each other. It's to the point where a lot of black people don't even think that there's, there's successful black people in America. Why? Because they're not around you. If you're all around hood people all the time, and you're living in poverty, of course you're going to think black America, everybody like this. No, we don't have communities like this. If everybody in the area that you know is poor and not Britain, of course you're going to believe that black people ain't doing shit in America. But when you, but that, because, that's because back in the days, the doctors, the black doctors lived in a black community. 
And a lot of those black doctors, I've seen this documentary back in the 90s, right? Uh, it, it was like a, at a hospital and everything like that. Like I think it was D.C. And these black doctors said, I want to give back. I want to give back, right? And they, they got to deal with people with gunshot wounds, people coming in, trying to stab them and everything. And so at the, the thing, some people said, I just can't do this no more. They gave up on their people. Now, this is what I'm going to talk about this in debt tonight. There's black people that want to service their people, but they're not going to go back to the hood or in the city because of the culture. When we say building Africa, building communities in Africa, right? Those same black people, will, if, if the situation was right, the pay and everything, they'll be gladly to come over and build with these new communities, these new Africanist communities, you know, this new black culture, this pan-African culture, this repatriation culture, this communal culture, this, this brotherhood and sisterhood culture. If we had that, then you would attract the black people who are successful. But all you people are saying, let's do it right here. They're not going to come back to the hood. They're not going to come back to a war zone. They're not going to come back to a place where four, 10, 14-year-old kids can beat up a 73-year-old man. It's not happening. So the only way we're gonna, ever going to be a people again is by having a nation of our own. Because the white man in America is pushing all the degeneracy. He's pushing. He's rewarding. The, the, the very filth in our culture. He's rewarding the Snoop Dogs, the 50 cents and everything with contracts like this. I saw this video, brother, with the, the Young Thugs manager, some cone guy, a Jewish guy. He's telling them how to do all this. Shit. White Jewish people, white Jewish racists are behind Young Thug, the baby, and all these people putting out this kind of toxic culture. You know, it's bigger than you think it is, right? Do you think, do you, you want to know why? Because the biggest threat to them in America is. Not gangs. The gangs are not a threat to them. The Bloods and the Crips are not a threat to them. The biggest threat to them is organized, safe, sanctuary, safe black families, strong black families. Strong black. You think about think about for a second. Why do you have Margaret Stanger with a, a Planned Parenthood? The black family. We're going. We're being Christians, Muslims, trying to do the right thing, everything like that. White people see that as a threat. The people on welfare, living in projects and everything like that, that are poor, that are uneducated, everything, they're no threat. The black people who are, are middle class and can make it and can compete against them, that can think outthink them, everything is a threat. Now, there's two things they want to do with that threat. Uh, convince us that if you can't beat us, join us, right? The Candace Owens and all these other people. Or on the left side, you have the Al Sharptons and everything. You know, they sold their souls on both sides. And then you, uh, then you got people like me, right, who are saying, I don't want any party uh, what you're doing. I don't want to be a Trumper. I don't want to be um, one of the leftists. I'm a nationalist. I want to build a nation of my own. And so the bottom line is this. What I do is this. I say, look, I'm in America. I'm going to make the best out of it. I'm going to play the game and everything. But in my heart and soul, right, I dream about a, a land where I'm a man and I'm a father figure. I'm a leader, or one of the leaders, and basically I can protect the young, protect women, protect my elderly, you know? Do you know what it's like, man, when I see older black people got to live in fear in these communities? I see it all the time. Every time I see an older black couple, older black guy, he always comes to me and say, hey, you brother. And basically he'll look at me like, and I'll turn around like, hey, how you doing, sir? He said, he'll be like, look at me like, hey, bro, yo, bro. You didn't, you didn't say what's up fast enough. But he knows and I know that I come from a different time period where you respect your elders. You know? And the bottom line is no older black man or woman should ever have to live in fear around other black people. The, the, the disrespect in our community is like it's broken. There's no community. There's no respect for elders. There's no respect for women. There's no respect for women. Don't respect men. No one respects anybody. No, everyone, uh, and we see this play on YouTube. People lie on you. They mischaracterize you. They, I don't know what, they, what they're trying to do and everything. They mischaracterize you. There's no respect. There's no love. There ain't anything like this. So therefore, we have a, so I'm not going to sit here and play community with you. You know, if you come after me or you talk about Brother Bomani or anybody that's with my camp, when I'm coming for you. And one way or another, I'm going to get you. You know, so I don't play this game. I'm done with that. I don't believe in this anymore. I don't believe that people who want to hold on to America is anything good. You know, you want to play, play games with this uh, thing. We're saying that the future, if you don't even care about yourself, right? 
I'm in my fifties. I know I'm not going to ever see the end of this, right? But there's an old proverb that says, a man who plants a tree, knowing that he's not going to benefit from his shade, is understanding the first path towards salvation and enlightenment. In other words, man, I'm planting seeds. I'm planting seeds. I know I'm not going to benefit from all the seeds, but I have to do it. Why do friggin' animals go out there? Why do wasp uh, goes out there and hunt dangerous tarantulas? Why? Because she, she has to. Because the future generations have to uh, eat off that tarantula's body to live. Why do people put themselves in danger? Why do animals go out there and hunt so their kids could uh, do it? That's what you have to do. But the bottom line, the black man in America has been so domesticated, the natural survival skills is not even in, the innate in us. Every other group of people, right, they, they don't look at marriage. They don't even have this discussion. They understand we have to marry because we have to pass down wealth. We have to have continuity. Each generation of black person is starting off brand new. We have nothing to leave our kids. Even if you build a nation, but if you're not building families and building continuity and everything, it's all a waste. If you're building families and everything, building wealth and everything, and you're white and, 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 and uh, your kid goes out there and he marries somebody of another race or wherever like that, you lose. We're the only group of people that think it's okay. We don't have any freaking sense of morals, values, and everything. We used to say, look, we're going to stay, keep within your race, marry within your race, pass wealth down. We, we had those values at one time. But they went and they told us. That's why they hate people like Bill Cosby. You know, they hate Bill Cosby. Because Bill Cosby didn't, he said, look, black people, it was tribal. Black people should stay with black people. I didn't know, I think Bill Cosby was a coon, whatever like that. But that right there, he was he was right about but now we live in a culture where they're telling black people, oh, no, date whoever you want, marry whoever you ever want, and everything like this. Color doesn't matter and all this kind of nonsense. Of course, they're going to tell you that, right? But they're not going to do it. They're going to make sure their wealth, their kids are going to make sure that it's passed down to them. You're not going to get any of that inheritance. Do you know the biggest uh, wealth transfer is not through the Wall Street, it's through inheritance? You know, a parents die and everything. I have a white guy that I know, right? His mother died, right? Him and his wife and his teenage son just graduated. We're living in an apartment complex. The mother died, right? He inherited the house. Now he has a house paid for. Nice house of Virginia Beach paid for. And he's out there saying, yeah, I got some more stuff to do the house and everything. It's ready to living and everything. So he got it. That's wealth transfer. How many black people ever get a house, uh, a start on life with a house that's passed down to you? A trust fund, a will. You can't do that if you got if you're building sort of thing where you got babies all over the place. You don't know who your daddy, your baby daddy, is, you know, it's kind of stuff like this and those kind of nonsense. So therefore, what I'm trying to say tonight is this, you know, I'm, what I what the movement is going to do now, the Pan-African, the nation building part of Pan-African is doing is, is we have to appeal to the black people who care about family and care about their culture and their future, who love themselves. You know, if you're a self-hating black American, African American, I have nothing to do with you. We are people, you know, and that we we gave you an identity. And I love the fact that uh, Bomani and I, he's, he's brothers from Jamaica. I'm African American, but we're brothers. We're the same people. And we're on the same page. So when we say African American, you're talking about Jamaicans or whoever else that knows they're black and they was in America and they, they're part of our Pan-African culture. That's what I mean by African American. People who have the mind, it's all about the mind, not lineage, it's the mind. So therefore, those of us who want to build families and build communities and build a black nation, you know, those are the people that we cannot, I cannot afford riffraff anymore. You know, I can't afford people who don't think anything is serious but beyond a bunch of nonsense. I want people that have something to lose and something to gain, who can see this as, wow, geez. And I know they'll come. You know, I know they'll come. But they're not going to follow anybody to the continent. I believe that the African-American, my people, deserve the best. I believe that we have a certain standard of living, a certain way of life, and we I know what our people want. You know, never, ever lower your standards. Never let anybody tell you that you got to take bullshit and abuse anything but from either from a white person or African, whoever it is. We're here to protect our people and everything and build what was ours. It was what was ours was was taken by force by from the African continent. As as Africa starts growing and expanding, we could basically be the key because Africa is never going to grow. 
the black race is never going to grow until it has an Af black African identity. And right now, there is no black African identity. It's so bad that the, U the African Union don't even define being African by race. You know, so I was on Dinah's show last time I was on his show a couple of weeks ago, right? And somebody mo brought up the uh, the sixth region of uh, of the African Union. And I said, no, that doesn't apply. And Dinah said, oh, yes, it does. He said, no, no, I'm sorry, my brother. It does not. The sixth region of Africa thing is, is by a lot of online stuff. It just like the ADOS FBA it does not freaking really exist. The sixth region of Africa, what they're talking about is Africans born abroad. They're talking about people like Cerise Starin, white South Africa. She's an African sixth region person. It's about in it's about Elon Musk. He's an African. And there's some people even trying to call him an African American. Those so the bottom line is this: this is what you have. There are no black Pan-Africanists like on the level of college genesis of Bomani Tayamba in the African Union. I call the African Union. So these people are uh, basically all the ideologies of Marcus Garvey, Kwame Nkrumah, all that stuff is gone. Whereas the Arab League clearly defines who's an Arab by race and everything, and they exclude people. Well, the African Union, basically, because we're a conquered the African mind, the African is conquered, right? He'll let somebody like Gaddafi be the leader. Somebody's not even a black man be a leader. Even though I, I, I have likes and dislikes about Muammar Gaddafi, he's not a black African. The bottom line is this, the black man is conquered. Why? Because the black man does not love himself the way other races do. The black man don't see value in his own race. Like Marcus Garvey said, he don't see value in his own race. If, uh, if a white man wants to be president of Nigeria right now, I guarantee you he'll be elected. I guarantee you if a white man wants to run for election, uh, Indian or Lebanese ran for election in Ghana, they probably win. Because the African mind does not see value in his thing. Now, he will not, they won't elect another black man. But when they see a white man or Chinese or anybody light-skinned, they see God. And the, the problem is this. All the stuff we talk about, we, there should be no college genesis of Omai Tayamba. If we were the people that loved ourselves, all this should be natural. There would have been 100,000 people in this chat right now commenting, yeah, let's get going, let's organize. By the time we're done with this show tonight, man, people would have been like, yeah, man, we done made so many deals. We're doing this and everything like that. But it's a slow burn with us because we got to go through the process of getting people to think, that they're worth, they're, the black race is worth saving. And when you're a race of people that's trying to, I saw this video today where this Nigerian girl was uh, doing skin grafting to bleach her skin out of her, uh, bleach her color out of her skin. But Carl, other people do, I don't give a damn what other people do. I'm talking about our race. Other people could do that and they still keep themselves together or whatever like that. But the black man doesn't want to be black and everything. That's why everybody comes around robbing and everything. And then people have nerve, a nerve to talk about black America colonizing Africa. Are you freaking insane? Are you nuts? And this is this is what I'm this is what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, we have too many people, right? And people say, why do you care about social media? I do care about it. <laughs> because this stuff spreads around. And we got people putting their lives on the line going to the continent. And there's a growing hostility towards black people from America going to Africa. Now, nobody says anything about the British going there and the Europeans going to Senegal and have little boys, little boys, having sex with little boys. Oh, that's no problem with that. Oh, yeah, some UN group. It takes some European, European group to go in there. The Africans sitting, oh, that's nothing. We've been doing that for a long time. So white men come over there and they have the little boys sitting on their little Senegalese boys sitting on their lap and everything. The old, fat, nasty-ass white women. 80 years old down there looking for a Gambian lover and shit like that, paying them, you know, Gambian boys and everything. Uh, one guy watches, one guy said he sold himself to a white man for money and everything. Let me ask you a question. How much is your soul worth? And then people always give me this nonsense like, well, you don't understand, Carla. What are you situation? First of all, I'll make sure I'll never be in that situation. If you're in that situation and everything where you guys sell your body and everything, that you need to look at the society around you and have a goddamn revolution. You need to take that president out, take everything out, shut it all down. 
and build it back up from the found, from the thing on righteousness and what you uh, uh, human dignity and everything. Forget the Pan African stuff. You know, your human dignity comes first. God put that in every human being to be to be women to be virtuous, men to be honorable, hardworking. All these things right here uh, transcends race, time, and age, and everything. So don't give me that crap of, oh, you don't understand everything. I hold everybody accountable. There's no, no reason to be a criminal. There's no reason to be a liar. There's no reason to be a murderer. There's no reason to be a thief. There's no reason to be a, an abuser. All that stuff like that is when people tolerate this stuff, that's basically the, 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 the death of civilization, the death of mankind. But we would we, we say, well, why is this happening in Africa? Well, you got to understand something. If you have a situation where people were taken by the millions from the continent and the worst human thing and it become normalized and everything. What do you think the after effects of that? What do you think the after effects were the same people that enslaved people or uh, that made their wealth? All these cities, Amsterdam, Lisbon, Portugal, Madrid, were backwater, third world, disease infested places, you know, until the transatlantic slave trade. They built their wealth on the blood of black Africans. Now these same people come to Africa and you kneel at their feet. You worship them. You want to join their Commonwealth clubs. The French still friggin' uh, uh, keeps African money in reserves in their banks and give them something to spend and everything. You worship the white man, but you're so suspicious of your brothers and sisters who just want to simply come to the African homeland. We don't know everything. We're going to make mistakes, but you understand something what I've learned. See, the, you believe, bought into the idea, the world belongs to the white man. You understand what I just said? The world belongs to the white man, to you, to the Negro P in mind, to the race trader mind, to the Sambo mind. The world belongs to the white man. He could blow it up. You wouldn't care less. He could pollute, do everything he wants to do. You don't even care less. Because you surrendered the world to him. That's not what the God put the black man on this earth for. The God inherently, even though we're just as capable of evil as everybody else and everything, but I think there's a certain type of evil that the white man has. The white man spilled, uh, had an oil spill in early in Obama's administration in uh, the Gulf of Mexico. For, for months, oil in real time was pouring into the Gulf of Mexico. Nobody went to jail. The deep water horizon thing. They just come up and just say, hey, we'll settle for $100 billion. Hey, all everybody disappeared. You didn't hear nothing about it. Democrat or Republican, okay, yeah, this guy appeared before Congress. He, the Congress was too too weak to even uh, 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 mandate or, or arrest this guy, these guys. This is what the settlement is. Like. We can't do nothing about it. These, these multinational oil companies, the same ones that own the oil fields in Nigeria and on the coast of West Africa, we're too scared to do anything about it. We sit there and let the white man bluff us. We, we let them terrorize us. We let them walk away with the whole goddamn world without saying a freaking thing. He pollutes the freaking Mississippi Delta, but you ain't mad about that. Why? Because it's his world to pollute. Is this his world to damage? But with the bag family over there, oh, you want to scrutinize every little thing they do. You know, whatever crazy boy, I don't know what the situation is. You want to, uh, every little thing he does. Beware of these African-American Akatas scamming. Ooh, 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 ooh. But a white man and a Chinese man are taking uh, a fish off the coast of Gambia, richest fishing grounds in the world, and selling it back to the local Gambians. While Ghana is facing a severe hunger crisis because it doesn't want to grow its own food and everything, it's easier to let the white man import, uh, import uh, stuff for them. But the so-called black man in America is a problem. We're the colonizer, you know? Are you the new colonizer, Colin? Oh, oh, colonizer. They called me colonizer. This is foolishness we're tired of, you know? Where's the proof? What does uh, that mean? Where's the proof? What, what, what proof? Uh, uh, Jules, speak what you what you want to say. If you want to come on the show or not, we'll put the link in the chat room. You could cam up and face me like a man and ask me a question. Okay? Bottom line is this. 
bottom line is, or maybe he's saying, uh, maybe he's agreeing with me, saying, where's the proof we're trying to, uh, uh, think? maybe he's, he's, uh, he's agreeing with me. Okay, I'll take that back. If you're agreeing with me, Jules, my bad. But the bottom line is this. You got people out there who are going out their way to try to disparage us, right? Why? Because they don't think we're going to be able to hit back. They don't think that we're going to be able to get to them and everything. They don't think they're going to, they think we're just going to forget about that. I, one thing about me, man, I'm unforgiving. You know, I'm unforgiving. You know, you cross me and that's it. You know, you cross me and that's it. I'm going to come for you. I'm not going to stop until I get you. Bottom line is this. Uh, this brother, Bomani Tayamba, has put his life into this. This is the 2000. This is a, uh, the, the, the modern day Marcus Garvey. As a young man, 28 years old, he took what I call, listen to this very carefully. It's one of my parables. Life's gamble. Now, what is uh, 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 life's gamble? Life's gamble, let me tell you a story, right? A story was told many times in Asian country, country life's gamble, right? You got a guy who's a, a, a who's a poor farmer, right? He sees a big city, right? I, I learned this story. But he has to learn how to survive in a big city. He has to learn how to become a martial arts fighter, sword fighter, or, uh, or and, and become part of the bandits, right? And when they rob gold, they become rich, right? Or he could just stay in his village, right? And when he looks at the old man in the village, right, he says, that's what I'll be if I stay here. But if I take life's gamble, right, this is what I want to, uh, I'll accomplish, right? Sometimes, like, and they also, when you don't take life's gamble, right, you have life's, what, regrets. See, Bomani Tayemba took life's gamble, and it's paying off for him now. This guy started this as a young man doing this, and it's paying off. That's why I say Bomani's untouchable. You know, he is untouchable. You know, do not talk, talk about this brother. Life's gamble. When you took life's gamble and you won, he took it and won. Whoever said, yeah, he said, I had this vision of taking people to Africa, building business and everything, and now it's materializing before our eyes. He took life's gamble. My problem was over the years and whatnot, I did not have regrets. I was like cautious and everything. I'm still cautious, you know. I wait until everything's my ducks in a row and everything like that, you know. This brother took the risk. He put his everything on the line. That's why he's always going to be a step above me. You know, he took the risk. So when somebody sit there and they got a goddamn YouTube channel and everything, and they ain't freaking haven't did shit, they have never taken the risk. They never put uh, 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 the uh, one one percent of what Bermani's on, and they want to be a freaking uh, crit, uh, critical. And you got some old fool with dusty ass dreadlocks on freaking YouTube or not <laughs> with uh, with, uh, with freaking. Uh, with, with old Curtis Mayfield records in the back and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you talking about this guy right here, Ferris said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know, dusty ass record collection in the back and whatnot. <laughs> remember, remember, this nigga actually said, "Well, what about me? I can't afford to go that. What about your dusty ass? You know?" Yeah. yeah so yeah. what? He, so what is he talking about? You know, one of the things I'm always telling people about this um this this clown here is that. You know, he's one of the people that's literally just, this, this literally just seriously just jealous. You know I mean, yes, it's like, it do what everybody else does. You save your money. You you know, there's a portion of your life where you have certain money. You put it aside for vacation or holiday or getaway, or you work it in a business or you do something. Yes, not everybody is going to be able to go, and not everybody's interested in going. Mm -hmm. You know, but most of the time I'll be like, and what's your point? You know, yeah, that, like he always talk about, like you know. I guess one you know, of the you know, you know, the makes sense mind, and things like that. But the thing of it is, he's an armchair revolution never that sits this, around. This, this, is, this is what I'm going to say. Doing real right, work in Africa. Go ahead. People, say, people always say, how is that helping people back here? Motherfucker, this ain't, we never said that. You guys got the county, the civil service, whatever like that, the social services. You go down there if you want to get help. You know what I'm saying? This is for people who want to build an app, who want who want to build in Africa, who see the need for this, you know? That's why absolutely. I said. A absolutely. You know what I mean? And the thing of it is, what this uh, this ignorant fool don't understand is the fact when you are a true nation of people, like say if you're looking at you know, the body of people in this uh, country, or if they want to consider themselves 
you know, a, a culture of black folks in America. Uh, I just want to call it that just a, as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, why should they limit themselves from doing international business? That's where it's at. You have China and then you have the China diaspora in every single other country. You can't name me one country. You don't have a, the Chinese running, they, running they, their usual operation, Chinese food and selling this you know, cheap, low, low cost goods uh, and things like that. I, I don't think there's anywhere. There's never been a place I've ever been. And I'm sure there's probably, you know, they, they're like the ultimate hustlers. And it's, you know, it's, that's their thing. And that's, you know, they, they're out there making a move. So if we are a nation of people and we're serious about our black economics, you know, uh, and, and I'm never telling people that Africa is perfect. I, I have my, I have my lots of big stressful issues. A lot of times I keep them in my private circle and things like that. And literally just don't put it out there in public YouTube and then try to be more positive and things like that. And sometimes you just have to go out in the back and the scream. You know, or bust a few rounds off or something, you know, but but nevertheless, um, it's like at least, you know, those of us that are in the move, at least took trips, went there, spent our money, made a move, went, went stepped it up and built relationships with brothers and sisters in the African continent. You know, to me, you know, you got to give people a, a lot of effort for doing that because you have that coward, uh, armchair revolutionary. Uh, Pharaoh said that literally told me Africa is not for Africans using my banner. And literally sticking to that and then talking about what about the people who can't afford it? The people can't afford it, it's what it is. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, I mean, why should you go around and tell people that they need to save their money and need to invest their money? If you choose to do it, you choose to do that. If you don't, you don't do that. You know, uh, put aside some of your money, get a passport. That's one. Uh, put some money to the side and buy a plane ticket. That's two. Put aside some money, make reservations, and you know, th there's things you can do. Uh, you know, we do group tours, and it's what it is. I'm not if someone don't want to pay that money or is not in their financial this budget to pay for it, I do understand that. But then you have to think about the white folks and other people sell tourism for eight, 10, 15, $12,000. And you, they're not going to get the level of experience and the level of customer relations and interaction and connection and networking that we may give. Uh, so the thing of it is you definitely want to, you want to step up your operation. You want to, you know, um, I don't want to ever this <laughs> include what I was about to say about uh, uh, white folks uh, exploring, but with us as a people, it's the modern day thing. <coughs> if you're building a if you're building an operation here and you're good at building certain business enterprise, why not expand it? Whether it's franchising or just seeking out greener pastures to expand. I give people a perfect example. It's just like um, I, I consider it the same thing as all these. Uh, uh, you know, like we talk about Egypt building a new capital and, and, and all these new cities popping up. Just like the operation I have, yeah, I've been living in this county for, uh, you know, for a while. I'm not going to tell people the exact time I've been living here, but people can put the numbers together for a while. Um, and the thing of it is, it's like, I, this can't be my life forever. You know what I mean? You have to work and do what you have to do, you know, but the, the, like the future of what we're doing is, you know, that 15 acre line that we, we, we're, we have acquired and paid in full for literally to build our new headquarters, which is our new business and community center to run all, all of our operations. You know, the things that that's done here and the things that, you know, want to do and can't do because you don't have the space and then the access you have for young minds, uh, which is the children you're bringing and the children that's there in the community that have little to no access to opportunities. Like I'm telling you, the town that we're building in, uh, literally brother, not one playground. That's not important. One playground. And That's not important. one trade school. Yeah, you, know, you gotta do stuff like that. Uh, that, that, that when you get when you build stuff like and let's think about for the kids, right? But, but at the same time, too, what I want to tell people, I'm not knocking the hustle. This is why we're there. You know, you're going somewhere where you're needed, and you're going somewhere where you can build from the ground up. So this is this is the the, the, the vision long term is to where you're looking to, you know, you're looking to build, you know, build a future. You know, you can't so, like, just like, <coughs> just like some of us know we can't sustain the life here, and, and even if we can. We realize that we have greener pastures. We have better opportunities. Our friends that and business people know that they work in this international countries. I have people that sometimes they do their six month contracts in different countries and move around. So you you're dealing with a more international breed of black people. Why yeah. not connect our black power network across the entire globe and do business with each other? Because one of the things we always talk about, family, as you see it right here, Africa for the Africans, which simply means. You know, if we put it in some context, it means many more things than what I'm about to explain. But basically, what you're looking to do is get more and more of us to do black power business with each other and invest in the future 
of our children by creating black power opportunities and enterprises where you're hiring black people. And then people say, well, are you going to only hire black people? Well, why are you worried about that? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, you know. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you, know you know, we're going to do what we need to do. You know, do you act the Chinaman or the, the, the Mexicans or other people? Or the, do they hire other people? I'll tell you one thing right now, <laughs> just like this. They don't have, just like they'll have their token white or token black or not. We might have our token Lebanese or whatever like that, you know. We might have that. But the bottom line is the power will be in our hands. You will know that when you see Bomani and Kala, you see any operation, black people are benefiting for 99% of it. You know what I'm saying? That's the Absolutely. And that's the biggest difference between the people uh, that we have. So whenever we have some of our ignorant folks talking about, we have people from the, uh, you know, from the African uh, diaspora going there to African exploiting people and doing all kind of stuff. I mean, some of the people may be people I know and respect and everything, but family, you know I mean? Let, 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 let's stop. Whatever, I, I mean, what are they trying to get some kind of, are they trying to just, I mean, what are they really trying to do? Because they can, the people can't really believe that. You know what I mean? Because well, uh, uh, I, you're you know, telling me you're going to give up your career, give up everything that you have earned and worked for just for the sole purpose of just being the, that person. Yeah, like saying, that. Like, like, like said, you're going there because you have love in your heart. Right. We're, That's we're it. Saying, and yeah, you're going to do some good things. What it, is, what it is is this. This is, what I'm, this is what the problem is, right? They have always, because black America is the only group of first world black people in the world, you know? We're not like Nigerians where these guys are constantly hustling, got to hustle, I got to get this. Black America is the only group of people that got, you know, just our working class black people in America make more than any other group of people on the freaking planet. That's just a fact. Healthcare, everything. They're not pressed for money like other people. Other people got to get rich or you're going to die. You know, Nigeria, there's no such thing as a middle class. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to work here and everything. You're constantly working there. So when they see us sitting back, relaxing and everything, right, and we're going to Africa, and when we're go giving up America, they automatically feel that, oh, we're going there because uh, American racism and so bad and all something like that. So we're going over to Africa to look better than the locals and all this kind of freaking nonsense. Hey, brother, brother, I'm being honest with you. We're not desperate. You we're not saying? desperate. I mean, we're, we're, I mean that's, that's the, the reality of it is, if, if, if we literally stayed where we are and not make a move, it's what it is. It's going to be, and it'll probably push us more to do things here. But right. we, but most of us realize the pan-African energy. Most right. of us realize, it's it's the ones of us that are doing that work, we realize that we have to think about the future. We have to think about uniting our continent right. and uniting our people across the globe. We, we're not being selfish, but if we were selfish, we could just eat, like I told people, I could easily, say, I can stay right I here easily continue my career and just say, you know, or continue my, you know, business I'm building here and just never yeah. made a move anywhere else. So the but bottom line, not, we see, but what's we the see point about studying home. and learning about all the things we study and learn about and talk about nation building and black power if we don't expand our operation and build with our people around the entire world? You know why? You, you know why it's done? Because the bottom line is this. it's just like anything else, right? We know it's a need for it, right? And we're the vessels to carry out it while we think we do this. You know, and we're not doing anything spectacular, right? This is basically what is supposed to be done. You know, it's supposed to be done. It's like you see a room. It's like you see a thing. Like an arc. We're like an architect or a thing. Why did they do it? Why did the guy call Mars for errors? Who never, whoever knows? Why did the chicken cross the road? We don't know why people do things, you know? <laughs> why are we building a, a, a pipeline to Africa? We don't know. We just know it has to be done. Hey, you know, hey, it's hey brother, a, I, got, I got a better one for you. Why is Egypt building a new capital? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why are they doing that? You know, why, they're just doing it, you know? Hey, why it's did called they, progression, why did, why? the future, advancement, nation yeah. building, expanding, right. uh, greener pastures, the future, <laughs> now, getting up off your, your, you know, yourself and not, you know, not settling for less. You know, thinking about the future, smarts. Like, when I think about the future, do you notice everyone who's building new cities, like I'm always saying, they're building more smarter and more advanced uh, right. uh, uh, cities. Yeah. Like, uh, like Egypt, the uh, they're, building, they're building a new tower taller than the Burj Khalifa. You know, so yeah. it's like, it's like, and uh, you know, brother, the, the wild thing about all of this is, uh, you know, we all know Egypt is a part of Africa, but uh, but all of these nations are uh, are run, are like the, the Arab nations, you know, or the Arab dominated nations, whether they're part of Africa or part of whatever, Part of the world they consider themselves because every time yeah, you ever seen Morocco, Morocco, Casablanca, that's like a European city. Holy Jesus! Yeah, exactly. So what you're looking at is like Morocco. You're looking at Algeria, and then you're looking at Egypt, Cairo. Yeah, you know. So and the language you're gonna get from there is you're gonna get Arabic and English. Right. 
And people uh-huh. ask, uh, why is it, why is, why did they, uh, why did people remember the story of Noah Ark, Noah's Ark? Remember the story yeah. of Noah in the Bible, right? When Noah was building that ark, what was everybody doing? Laughing. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep laughing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> of, all you all you people out there think of like call me Collar Noah. You know? Call Bamani Collar, Collar Bamani Noah. Noah's Ark. This is Noah's Ark. The ark exactly. It's like I'm telling people I'm building, we're building a new headquarters and a new town and a new community and everything. Why are you going all that way far to do this? Why are you doing all of this? Because stuff? the storm is about to come. You yeah, know? because because the same reason why Egypt is building a new capital. <laughs> same way Noah, that's the same way why Noah built his built his ark. <laughs> I was gonna flood the world and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Something's the coming. Is, the- yeah, brother, we're dealing with some visionless people. Like, yeah, you know, like you know, we gotta like back what I was talking about. This guy, right? This this clown right here, Pharaoh said that yeah. he has like no vision. And the thing after this, if we were to listen to old fools like that, that want to be elders. We'll be backwards and stuck in time. Yo, you bro, you got to cut these. We have, to, be, we have to open up our minds to a fresh young generation of thinkers and people who wants to move the status quo, not the sitting in their the, the, the armchair and just collecting their food stamps to their welfare. Yeah, yeah, welfare. What that, security. Yeah. And was he in the military? Is he one of? I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think he was in the military. No, I, no, I don't think he had. A, I don't think he had the heart enough to join. He was probably doing the same thing that he was doing, making all these analysis and making all these comparisons and just. Talking and gossiping, but but nevertheless, man, family, it's like uh, it's it's what it's, it's is it is it a rough journey? Do I sometimes regret many of the things? Absolutely, it's but the thing of it, it doesn't matter. Like sometimes I would go off and start, you know, and I, you know, but it's like it has to be done. The, it has to be done. It will the be trials done. and tribulations and the struggles we go through. I got stories. I, I you know I could do shows and do, and, and tell people stories for days from. Our story to other people's story of all the trauma and the stress you have went through, trying to make this connection work. Because you have to, people have to ultimately look at it, brother. You are sacrificing a whole lot. I am. But then ultimately, the things you're gonna get back for us as a it's people, worth it. to make it's sure worth that it. our children have a future, and to make sure that we can live the the later part of our life in paradise. Like mm-hmm. if we build it, like when we build that town and we build a marina, we build, you know, we build <clears throat> beach operations as you know. <clears throat> right. Because one thing is. I'm keep on telling people, you know, you know, uh, the, the, those the Arab nations are building cities in the desert. We have land, beautiful beaches. We have beautiful greeny land. We don't have to do all the stuff that they have to do, but we have to do something, you know, because it's not going to develop itself. Right. You know? and, and, and these people are going out their way to develop new cities in the damn desert. You know, that is visionary. That is like thinking about the future and the sustainability of your people. And you know, yeah, like what do you call like Dubai, the Naya Arab Emirates, right? People are laughing at them and say, Why are y'all trying to build a city in the desert? You know, they are they laughing like, now. <laughs> you're not laughing now. You're not laughing now. <laughs> Who's having the last laugh? You know, and so the bottom line is this, and also we always go back to Liberia. How you that? Well, I if you look at the history of Liberia, we built cities in Liberia by ourselves. He built the whole republic by ourselves. There were no white contractors, there were no NGOs. Liberia was built by black men, you know, in the in the face of colonial threats and everything. They survived and they built the republic and maintained the republic and maintained their sovereignty and everything like that. While most of the world was under colonial rule, Liberia stood out as an independent republic. That's why they attack. Now you ask yourself this question. Why is there Liberia on everybody's minds right now? Why? Because it's, it's ties to the movement we go today. See, Liberia 2.0. Bamani, no, the Liberia 2.0. So they put that out there with ignorance of, they know people won't take time to go read Liberian history and stuff like that. You know, I wrote this book, and there's plenty of other scholars that have learned the history. They go, Liberia 2.0, while they're sitting in their raggedy ass uh, apartment and they're on YouTube and roaches, you see roaches in the background of the wall crawling around and shit like that, you know? And they're sitting there in their dusty ass stuff like that with baby diapers, dirty baby diapers all over the place. Yeah, y'all yeah. You dusty ass, crusty ass niggas don't know shit about history. Don't know shit about anybody. When it's shit on our ancestors who built, who went, who left America and built the republic and everything, you want to shit on them, call them colonizer. I mean, don't even know what the freaking word colonizer means. Don't even know what colonial means. You know, it's just yeah. really, really sick. It's sick. It's sick. If you you're that you're that you're that sick to say something like that, right? But it was it was say, like two Negro peons that said it, right? It was one that's called Afro. Afro dumbass. Afro dumbass. 
Even my good friend O'Shea Duke Jackson, I don't know what has gotten into him lately. You know, he knows better. O'Shea knows better. You know, he listens to Sister Carl. You know, but when you basically are a slave to clicks, likes, and views and everything, you're nothing but a goddamn sambo. That's all the thing. I think. People think we do this. I don't fuck. I'm not a goddamn entertainer. I don't give a damn about no YouTube clicks and views and stuff like this. Oh, you got great content and everything. You guys, you guys, that's why you have absolute fools, right? Who will make a living on YouTube being goddamn fools. You know, Dane Calloway made a, uh, uh, made himself wealthy telling black people that you ain't black, you're Native American, all kinds of stupid stuff. And people follow him. But that's okay. You know, and another clown, the Tariq Nasheed, you know, where's that fucking museum? Now, this nigga's giving uh, uh, political advice and whatnot. And nigga talking about pink mix slide, pimp juice, and all kind of whatever the fuck he's into and everything. You Yo, know, brother, all these, brother, these clowns never miss an opportunity, man. They never miss an opportunity to exploit people and talk all kinds of freaking nonsense and everything. And I'm freaking tired of it, you know? If you want to do that, that's fine. But keep, keep my name and keep our name out your mouth. Stay away from this Pan-African movie, because this is for real. We have real people putting their, their real lives on the line. And one thing I will never do, if I see somebody and say, well, what do you think about the back family? You never hear me say about anything about the back family because these guys are taking a risk, family taking a risk being in Gambia, doing what they got to do. I'm not going to freaking sit there. Oh, right. I mean, I mean, I, I said a couple of jokes here and there about Ricky. You know, I said, calling Fred Sanford one time. Sanford son. It was kind of funny because he was getting some tires and one else kind of funny. Right? But the bottom line, I support the back family. I support anybody that's on the continent doing something and making a life for themselves. It ain't easy. I understand that. But I'm, one thing I'm not going to do is make light of people who took that life's gamble. Why? Because the bottom line is I haven't took that life's gamble. Maybe if I was younger, if I was in my 30s, I'd probably be on the continent right now. Everything. But I'm older now. I get, when I do stuff right now, when you get older, your shit got to be deliberate. Ricky and Cynthia are way older than me, and they went to Gambia at that age. You got to give them respect for that. That Pharaoh said that ain't gonna do no shit like that. You know, <clears throat> they're over in the Gambia making it. They look like they're happy. And so the bottom line, when people take life scam, my, my brother Mark Blanton and his wife, she gave up her, her, uh, her practice. These are the type of black people I really try to look out for, the black professional class, everything. We get those black people on board. It's, it's, it's a wrap, man. This movement is, is gonna be the premium movement. That's why everybody's talking about Panama, because they know the storm is coming. Mark Blanton and his wife, when I met him a few years ago, when I, he from Culpeper, Virginia, middle America, Culpeper, Virginia, middle class life. His wife's a doctor, had a practice, sold a practice, and they both in South Africa right now living the dream life, getting other African Americans to go there and settle, buy homes, invest, everything. South Africa has that sort of infrastructure that you could easily go to the continent and port over. We don't have to do all the stuff we got to do in other countries. You know, they already got communities. And black people's associations and African American associations, so it's easier over there. I'm like, that's good too. If you want to go to South Africa, you know, you see it's, it's more developed and everything, go right ahead. I'm not gonna knock anybody that took life's gamble and doing something productive. And you know, people over, over uh, uh, in Tanzania, black people doing it better. What am I doing? Oh, you ain't doing this. You're not, you know, you're on the continent and you're you're building and you took the the, the chance and everything. Like, you got my support, and that's what the problem is right here. We don't have a support system on the continent. It's not enough to say we need to be together. I got to support you, you know? And the BAO, we got chapters for each. We got groups in our social network for each country. I would like people to join when they are in the country and start networking with each other. And the BAO is one group that did have people from different countries, uh, do, do have different people hooking up. You know, people join the BAO was in the Gambia and they started networking and stuff like this. But what the problem is, YouTube. The problem is, instead of the BAO social network and everything being the go between, we're coming at each other. I said, so oh, you hear somebody did a video about you today. Anybody can get on YouTube and start making videos. It's going to come a time where, you know, all the people on the continent, right? Like, stop this YouTube. That's what's destroying the movement. All these idiots on YouTube is going back and forth and everything. And you're putting content out there and everything. I think you should go there and live your best life. Keep your privacy and everything. I'm, I enjoy my part. I have a whole world. I run a business here. But you won't know it because I, it's not on YouTube. It's private. I, I respect my privacy. When I make the move to the continent, I'm not going to have no goddamn YouTube channel. But what do you do every day, Carl? You won't know. Even when I went to Liberia last year, 
I put a couple of video clips. I did a couple of shows with a couple of people and everything, but I wasn't on a, on a YouTube live. Yeah, walking down here. No, because I like my privacy. You know, and we don't, and we like that. You know, so, and the problem is this. We got way too many people who are dependent on YouTube revenue. And how do you depend on YouTube revenue? First of all, all 90% of all YouTube, right? The black YouTube, right? On the Africa is directed towards black America. Because there's YouTube is barely monetized on the African continent. So for in order for you to make YouTube videos, you have your audience have to be in America. And who's your audience in America? People who like gossip and uh, and stupid stuff on the continent. That's what sells. So once again, the white man figured out how to weigh how to make us into a bunch of sambos, monkeys, and coons and everything, you know. The pan coon pan Africans. So you got pan Africans. And you got Pan Africans, you know, on there with their freaking bug eyed jigaboo antics on the continent and everything. Yeah, I like that. Pan Africans. That's official. Yeah, yeah Pan Africans, you know. That's, that's official. We're going to put that in our Bonnick's dictionary. Yeah, Pan Africans. <laughs> People who like cooning, buck dancing, and shining and on the African continent under the guise of Pan Africans. Just because they got a fucking passport and a YouTube channel, uh, they want to get respect. No, you're a fucking Pan African. You know, you, you find a way how to bring that fucking coon energy to the freaking African continent. And I'm sick and tired of these niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? The only people that's serious to me are Romani and a couple other people that I know it's about that life. Everybody else want to make YouTube stars and all this kind of freaking nonsense. You know, pan Africans, Negro peens, all these goofy ass motherfuckers. Where, where the fuck they don't get out of my life? I'm tired of them. You know, what part of I'm serious about this? You know, I really believe and I know deep down everything about me believes in this idea of a nation, an Africa, a nation of my own. I sacrificed everything. I don't freaking make money off of this. I've spent my, my money on this. Why? Because this is something I believe in. This is something I, it's in my soul. And I got to let it be mocked and ridiculed by a bunch of freaking people for some YouTube likes and clicks and entertainment. We got Afro dumbass up there, you know. <clears throat> Afro dumbass is up there talking about Kyle. I said, you know, he lied completely, lied on my ass. They can lie on. <laughs> said Kyle said we should have do pad. Look, I'm the one that's saying right now Africa is volatile. You can go to Liberia as a U.S. as an African American, right, and buy land, open business, everything. You not need freaking a passport. And also, I want to talk about something, right? I talked about this last time on the show, but I didn't really get in deep into it, right? <clears throat> the, right? The idea of a citizen. Let's talk about this, right? In Africa, right, I don't think you have citizenship, right? I don't think the sort of citizenship until you get ready to travel and everything and become a citizen. Citizenship is like a suggestion. You're more like a subject. A citizen has the idea that, okay, I can renounce my citizenship and I'm leaving. Ain't nobody in Africa got the money to renounce their citizenship and leave their country and everything. They're stuck with it. So the government treats them like that. You ain't going nowhere. You're a black ass. Get shut, shut that. Sit, sit down someplace. I ain't responsible to you. I do what the fuck I want to do. And you're going to like it. Or the soldier's going to show up at your door and you know how that's going to turn out. There's no citizenship as you see in other countries, you know, where people out there saying this. Oh, the, the the president have listened to the citizens, and this policy has changed. That doesn't happen in no damn Africa. When the government says something, that's it. They don't be they be holding to no so-called citizens. What a citizen is this: when you are a citizen of a republic, your allegiance, your loyalties. Now we said, "Well, how, Carlo, aren't you a U.S. citizen?" Okay, I'm a citizen, right? But I'm in that <clears throat> conscientious objective status. Okay, well, what do you mean, Colin? Right now, if people don't know, there are separatist groups in America that the U.S. government either monitors and keeps an eye on, but they recognize, right? Such as the Hasidic community in New York. Such as the Amish community, right, in Pennsylvania. You got Amish communities. They don't believe in America and stuff like that. They have their own communities and everything like that. And people say, well, separate. they don't want to be part of the so-called America. They live in America, right? They function and everything, but they have a separatist community. We never built separatist communities in America. We say down with the white man and everything, 
but Nation of Islam says they're Nation of Islam, but they never built these com uh, communities in America to uh, sustaining communities in America. This is why the, uh, I realized that as long as we are in America, black people, for some reason, are always going to be want to be white. See, the Amish and all these people are still white. So they their separatist movement is easier. They can just say, okay, we're Amish over here. So they're not burdened by the skin color. So anytime, they, in their mind, anytime, they can say, I could, I, I could blend the society when I want to. Black people feel like they got too much to lose if they become a separatist in America. So they always got to prove ourselves to be American. I'm an American. There's people, there's, there's, there's Negroes right now saying, collar, I want to shoot that collar, right? Because I'm threatening their their uh, view of themselves as American. I'm an American like anybody else, Kyle. Like, oh, my brother, Nack Measy, he's probably listening right now, man. Nack is probably listening right now, throwing darts at the screen. Kyle, how dare you, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah Kyle, something about you that uh, you piss a lot of people off, brother. I mean, I, uh, but the thing of it is, all we're talking about is research, analysis, studies, and things like that. So I think people are just like literally just taking things too personal. Yeah, we are talking that. about the future and progression. Let, 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 me say, let me say this. Let me say this, right? Now, I know, see, the problem is the pro-black American Negro, right, the knack means and everything, if they were smart, right, they have the upper hand, right? We still got to prove this out, you know? They have the upper hand. But what is it about America that just is about, if you really believe America is a country for you and everything, why are you so triggered by the Pan-African movement? That's what I don't understand. Maybe you don't believe what you say you believe. I wish it was the truth, but they know it's not the truth. But the thing you of it is, when people when people have issues with the, that movement, it's ignorance. Because I'm telling people, it makes sense for you to expand the operation. It makes but sense. But they see that as a threat. Because what we're doing is doing investing, and we also this access of things that we're not going to be able to get here in America. Obviously, like land, like the land that we we need to get, like land that we need to get to be able to. Like literally build what we need to build without being interrupted. You know, you're literally limited here. So that's another that's one of the here. options in Africa. And that's one of the options as far as building that connection. You know, you literally and you know, people just gotta literally just get over themselves, you know. Uh and you know, uh, especially uh, you know, the haters that we have in Africa, like why what's what's up with all these black folks? From the diaspora coming to Africa, coming to this specific, I mean, it's one of two countries. It's not that popular. So we talk about countries like Ghana and Tanzania. Those mm -hmm. are the popular countries, and it's like people have a lot of questions. But it's like you know, follow what we're doing, and you'll see the works. Follow the works. I don't and think they really care. And you don't see us taking advantage of people. What we're doing is creating opportunities. Like some of the people that I work with. I mean, I don't mean I don't know which other <coughs> African diaspora they were working with before they connect with me, but it's like you connect a whole world of people where you're doing good business with them. Yeah. And and these are the and show, showcasing that these are the things that we should and can do as a people. But then you have, but not everybody's gonna be down with that. That's what I realized. You're gonna always have the haters, and you know, but then again, you know, that's what haters do, they're gonna hate. It's like you know, the 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 coward that we all talk about, Pharaoh said that. And people wanna know why do I bring this guy name up? Number one, because he, you know, disrespect our banner and and retitle our banner, and put Africa is not for Africans. So when you look at my same banner, you like, you like wondering what, you know, and he literally, you know, and it's one of those situations where if if you was close to me, I'll backslap him. But it's like mm -hmm. that's the, the, the disrespectful things that people do, but they see you doing something special to connect our people, because that's all, that's what's needed, and that's all we're doing. And they have all of these objectives, this and that. It's like, okay, well, if you're not interested in going to Africa, okay, that's your business. Don't discourage other people. Don't try to take customers and people that we have, that we're looking to connect with. Because the thing of it is, you know, a lot of times that's how business work. You know what I mean? You literally, you know, like, you know you're running your operation and then you have the haters. They literally just want to run their mouth. Since they can't get no business, they just want to discourage other people to do business. You know, and then, yeah, I, I say, and then, like, then so what if you don't have the, the money to go to, 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 you know, so what if you don't have the money to go to Africa? You know, what I mean, what does that what does that mean for other people? I mean, what right. was his point? Because you know, I don't watch his video. No, he was basically saying somebody was saying, uh, "What do you think about uh, these guys doing tours to Africa?" He's talking about these guys. <laughs> yeah, so somebody in the chat room, he's like, "Yeah, what about us that can't go?" You know, <laughs> and I said to myself, "Man, who?" Nobody owe you a dusty, grimy ass or any of that trip to Africa. You can't go. You can't go, nigga. You know? 
How about you save your money and stop buying so much Air Jordans? <laughs> Did you see an old nigga with buys Air Jordans? You serious? How about, him, how about you need to cash in them old records? Yeah, <laughs> cash, yeah, he, money. He, yo, if he cashed in them old records, he could probably have like six thousand dollars, right? And there you go. You know, he can go on two trips with that shit. You know, you know, a dusty, crusty nigga, man, talking about talking about. Uh, I'm about to go, you know, you know these dusty negroes and whatnot. You know, it just, it just fun, it's just funny. And what gets me is this: I sit back, right? Like, let me tell you something, folks. You know what the battle is going to be in the future of the Pan African movement is? It's going to be the battle for Black Middle America. You know, Black Middle America. Black men. Mar- that's why I support Mark Blanton because he's winning that battle. You know, and uh, they can't say nothing because South Africa is a first world country. You know, and they're going over to South Africa and they're living on the continent, connected. As from South Africa, they're going to Botswana, Tanzania, and all these other countries in the region, Namibia, Mozambique, and stuff like that. So they introduce them to the African continent from South Africa. And so, therefore, you can't stop me. Now, when, when Blacks Without Borders came around, see, that's what I said about I love about African America. I love my people so much, right? Blacks Without Borders were hit because they talked about Black people living this nice lifestyle in South Africa with Black South Africa, united with Black South Africa to build this new business and everything like that. Eugene Jackson was over in it. Uh, African Venture Partners went in. I said, wow, see, that's the whole thing, infrastructure, you know? Now, when Ghana don't have the infrastructure South Africa has, we're starting from scratch, you know. But still, Ghana's a wonderful country, too. You know, we could go there and build and everything. But the whole thing is this, though, even with Blacks Without Borders, right? Oh, man, you know, uh, like this. But the thing is, they lost that battle because uh, Eugene Jackson said in his video, he said this, go watch Blacks Without Borders. He said, he goes, if I he goes, I tried to start his World African Network, it failed in America. He couldn't get all the whatever bullshit. So he took his capital to South Africa, $30 million. Now he has farms, businesses, uh, IT centers, everything. African venture partners said there's no way in the world that I would he goes, he goes, because you're in Africa, right? And you're African American. He said that he uh, uh was on the back end of a billion dollar deal with Richard Branson Virgil group, the back end of a deal. So he, he, they could do it, his group, his provide the capital and everything, and they got it done. Now, gives me every, the story I keep hearing in South Africa. There's one black woman on there that was a jeweler, right? They said, okay, a black woman jeweler or that stuff you can never do. See, the whole thing about Africa is right. We don't want, we don't need people that are losers. We want winners, okay? And we want to provide a situation where you can win on the African continent. But if you're a loser in America, like Farrell says that, right, you're not going to win. That's why he said, oh, why are you going to Africa? Because he's a loser. The dude has nothing accomplished in his life. And these other people are just YouTube content creators. It's they're running their mouth. If you're a loser in America, you're going to lose in Africa. What I'm going to showcase is all the black people that are winning in Africa, right? And we start saying that the black people who are winning in Africa, we give them support, say, we support you. You know, everybody's going to say, oh, yeah, oh, you're a colonizer taking man. No, we're businessmen coming to our ancestral homeland, no matter where it's at, and building businesses, you know, and participating in the African continent. And the BAO and Africa and African Africans organization is a support group. You know, that's all. If you're, only, if you're a black African American or diaspora in the African continent, we have your back. We understand that you've got good intentions for the most part, right? You know, I know there's exceptions. But you have a we, we're saying you have a legitimate right and don't apologize for what you're trying to do. Because what people are trying to do is this. Oh, all that. They're they're attacking Terrence Howard. I don't know nothing about Terrence Howard. You heard about Terrence Howard in Uganda? Money. No, they're attacking they're Terrence Howard doing something. I forgot what I don't know what it is, right? Well, they're attacking Terrence Howard saying, Oh, he's a CIA spy and all stuff like this. That he's sat there. He says, "Notice how he put this thing after Uganda uh, found all that gold, and next thing you know, he's going to help uh, the United States take it. all this stupid stuff." And it's basically saying all the African Americans, African Americans, uh, me, you, and I are, are in the CIA and all this kind of stuff. That the Negro peons are spreading this, this, these lies. Now, why are they doing that? Because they're envious and jealous. Because if you're sitting in there on welfare in the UK. And these people have this idea that America is so racist and everything. America has nothing on Europe. 
a, a, a Nigerian guy was just beating to death in broad daylight in Italy. You know, they throw banana peels on soccer stadiums and uh, at African players. In America, they, they spit on African women. I seen a freaking nasty ass Jewish guy spit in the face of a black woman. Nigga spitting on her in Amsterdam. Bottom line is that shit don't happen in America. And I had this idiot Mike uh, O on the uh, thing talking about, so you call him, man, you guys are so violent. I said, look, yeah, that's right. White people know if they get out of line, we're going to punch them in the mouth. But yeah, but where does that get you? It gets us a lot of satisf satisfaction. And I told him, I said, I'm a successful businessman. I had to kiss somebody. I got white people working for me in my, my agency. I had to kiss somebody's ass. You Nigerians trying to come over here and train us to kiss the white man's ass. No, it don't work like that. We African-Americans do not make good pets. The white people are trying to use you in America to say, hey, be more. No, we're not going to be more like Nigerians. You know, we're cleaner. We have a higher standard of living. You know what I'm saying? We are, we're just a different type of people. We're not going to have their grifting mentality in our culture or not. We're not going to sit there and let's grovel over white man's crumbs and whatnot so they can spit in our face and tell us how good we, good we are. We proved ourselves in America. We got nothing, or anything to prove to anybody. I said, I said the other night, I said, look, if you look at uh, the who does all the hard work in America, the shipyards, the construction, everything like that, it's African-American men. If the African-American men went on strike in America, this country would shut down tomorrow. But if Nigerians basically left, nobody would miss them. So we're, 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 we're what counts in America. We're trying to appeal to, this movement right here is trying to appeal to black America, saying we have your back. We're not going to turn our backs on you and everything like that for any other group. We are pat we're African. We love each other. We're all one race and everything. That's fine. But our people in America, we come first. We look after each other first. We have to stick together. Or against all the odds. That's how they're doing it in South Africa. The black African-American community in South Africa is thriving right now because they all stick together. So we want to go to Africa. Oh, I just I don't want to be around Africa. And then you get in trouble and you out there, your money's gone and everything like that. Okay, what, what can we do? Don't be a fool. When Africans come to America, they got their little Ni the Nigerian associations. They, they even got their own Nigerian uh, uh, uh putting on Nigerian and Ghanaian television stations inside America. They completely separate themselves from the mass of the black people in America. They got their little Liberias here, their, their little Hades, their little Senegals, all stuff like this, you know, completely tribalized. But when it comes to Africa, when we go to Africa, those who are Pan-Africans go to Africa, we're supposed to just, oh, just, just, uh, just don't do it. Don't be together and everything. What is it? What is people don't like about us? But why? Because they know when we're united and everything like that, we're strength in that. There's power in that. You know, everybody wants to feed off us, right, and benefit from us, but we're not supposed to benefit from us. So we're in the same situation we're in slavery. With slavery, we didn't benefit from our labor. And in America, we don't benefit from our wealth. We generate $1.4 trillion a year. 99% of that goes back into other people's pockets. None of that money turns back over to the black community. Black businesses don't have access to the black market in America. Why? Because they'll let you be black, but when it comes to power, oh, no. No. We don't have black television stations and everything that basically have a captive black audience. Everything. We don't have that. Why? Because it means power. Power is something we're not allowed to have. That's not part of the deal in America. They, they they feel like they did us a favor by let by they, the narrative is they let they let us out of slavery by doing us a favor and don't keep asking for too much. So this is what it is, you know. It's a uh, comments. Uh, B hoop says, please, please let's stay focused on organizing. We have to realize that black skin does not make one righteous, make us righteous. Yeah, focus. yeah that, you're right about that. Black skin does not make you unrighteous, you know, it does not. I agree with that. We have to basically organize, you know, basically to organize is join the BAO. You know, I'll put that link in my thing. I join our social network, you know, and join uh, like this. That's how you get organized. You know, Bomani and I uh, uh, are going to be doing these uh, shows 
and we're gonna start doing uh, Zoom calls, stuff like that. You know, as a months leading up to the uh, trip to Liberia next year. You know, and uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna do this. And like I said, we want to basically connect more people in our uh, network together. Because by the way, said, our movement, the Pan-African movement, is under attack. You know, it's under attack by sabotage and race traders, you know. And, and let me read you what Cicero wrote about the enemy within, okay? I'm going to read something to you. And he wrote this in uh, 80 BC. Cicero was a Roman orator. You know, I, mean, I talked about the sly whispers. Remember that uh, against the Negro Pan? Remember that, uh, Bermani? The sly whispers. I'm going I'm to read this again. You know, yeah, sly whispers. The sly whispers. I'm going to read this again. You know? Yeah. What's <coughs> Cicero. Okay. All right. Okay. Cicero, he talked about a nation. See, when you become a nation, let's first let's find what a nation is. A nation is a people with one. Uh, we, we want to become a nation. That's the ultimate goal. Become a nation. A nation means certain things are arrested, right? Our individuality is arrested for a collective identity. Okay, what does that mean by that? That means that uh, we may be uh, born in New York, we may be born in Jamaica and everything, but when we become a nation, we become one people, indivisible. That's what a nation is. A nation usually, a nation lives in an area where the laws and the space they control is on one accord. That means the customs and everything in that space uh, is the dominant. That means that the laws, the customs, the culture of that land reflects the nation. The nation is a people. People who come to the nation have to assimilate, adopt the culture and uh, and ways and mores and values of that nation, the traditions and all stuff like that. That's what makes a people a people. We live in a world where uh, they're destroying that. I mean, let me let me be honest. Let me let me say something to you about America, right? And people are going to be shocked when I say this, right? <clears throat> uh, even though I'm not a 4th of July ne Negro and everything, I'm not going to be a hypocrite, right? I believe that if you believe in America, believe in America. Don't be here. This is what I hate. I hate when people say, oh, America's racist and everything like that. But they every 4th of July, they're sucking on some ribs and, and chicken, fried chicken and grape soda and shit, you know, out there blowing up fireworks. See, the whole thing is this, though. America is a republic. It, uh, it gave you one little chance to join and become American. Right? Me, personally, I can't do that. I know my ancestors, what my calling life, I can't do that. Now, if you want to be an American and everything like that, I'm not. I'm the one, I'm not going to knock you. You never see me. I mean, I may be joking, call you a Captain America Negro once in a while. Hey, you know, fine. But for the most part, I understand the majority of black people want to be Americans. I get that. But what I'm trying to do is this. I'm trying to make it seem like if those brothers that you're still my brother and sister, we're still African American, we're still a people. Those of us who want a nation of our own, can we reconcile without calling each other names or demonizing each other? Those of us who want to build a future outside of America, beyond America, can we basically... Uh, get along. You know, I recognize that we fought in every war and we have every right to be an American. I'm going to fight for your right to be an American. You know, I'll fight for that. Fight for my right to have a nation and of my own on the African continent. Can we do that? Is that a compromise? Every time I get ready to do that, right, these same Negroes, instead of saying, you know something, Colin, you're right, man. I'm a Captain America Negro. I love America, you know. I sing Lee Greenwood. I'm proud to be an American. I said, Negro, I know you sing Lee Greenwood. I know you sing the Pledge of Allegiance, all this stuff like that. You sing Yankee Doodle Dandy and everything. You know, I see you, man. I was peeping in your window the other day. You're out there with your American flag. Yeah. And soon I'll come around, you're like, yeah, black power, black power, black power. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know that, man. I, I, I get, you know, I 
I get that. I know you got uh, feelings for uh, Barack Obama and everything, hope and change and everything like that. I get it, Negro. I get it. You want to be American. But why are you all so threatened by me? I get that. I get how you want to be American. You want to be part of America. I get that. You know, I was there too at one time. But when I say, look, I'm looking beyond America, I know that our fullest potential is in a nation of our own, with a flag of our own, with a government of our own. Why can't you see that too? That's the conundrum we're in. That's something the, the Jews had to face. There were the Zionists, right? People don't realize this history, right? The Zionist movement was copied off of Liberia. The Jews like Theodore Herzl studied Edward Wilmot Blyden, the father of Pan-Africa, said, look, man, if the black people could return to a free town in Liberia and build a modern city state, or st state, why can't we return to the Palestine? Originally, the, the state of Israel was supposed to be in Uganda. People don't even realize that, or Lake Victoria. People don't realize that. They were supposed to be there. But... What happens is some Jews said, look, let's just start moving to the Palestine. They start moving there. They started, there was like an exodus of Jews there. They start occupying land and everything. They got along the Palestinian. And then next thing you know, they had seven days war. Next thing you know, they declared themselves a state. And you know what they did? You had Jews going on ships, right? And landing on the on the banks of the Tel, with Tel Aviv right now in tents. Built hospitals. Jews that had middle class lives in Germany and everything. They didn't, and I, I based my novel on this. They didn't have to go. They had, they could have integrated back into German society. They could have went back to France and everything. But the desire to have their own land, they were living in tent cities for years on the banks of the, uh, there. The Britain wouldn't even recognize Israel by one vote. The Liberia vote, they became recognized as a state, and they thankful to this day that they have a home of their own. The black man, in America, wants to hold on to America, you know. I want those type of black people. When that chance comes, when we can have a land of our own and whatnot, you, you might have to say, look, man, I got my freaking outback campers thing. When I, I got my solar panel and everything, we're going to hold on this land. They knew that if they hold that land, eventually Tel Aviv would become a city. But a black man in America don't want to freaking do anything. I, we understand that the majority of people are there, but we do need those pioneers, those people that want to take life's gamble and do this. And those who take life's gamble in order to get the support, not just support, but respect. You know, how can somebody who takes life's gamble, right, and say, I want to build this and everything, I want to do something new and everything, uh, how is he less than somebody who takes the, the easy route, the shortcut, you know? The white man is always going to give you a place in his society at the bottom. That's all he's offering you. He'll give you some rappers, some sports stars. He'll, he'll even let you enter the middle class. But ain't but so far. You're never gonna be able to say, you know something, you know, I want to build a city in a desert like Las Vegas. A white man, a Jewish white man, Bugsy Siegel, could do that. Ain't no black man in America could do that. No black man could say, I want to build this and everything, and everybody come or come around him with billions of dollars, putting their pensions and savings behind his project and everything. No black man has a master plan like that in America. But in your own land, you could probably do that. You will be able to do that. So the bottom line is this. Do we take life's gamble and just say, okay, this is what we want. Uh, the rappers and everybody else becoming rich and everything. The black middle class is being squeezed and everything, marginalized. Everything. Nobody gives a damn about us and everything. Or we basically say, you know something? I understand that I'm not shit in America, but my son one day is going to school to be an engineer. I would love to send my son to the Africa stand, you know? I would love to send my daughter to, to be a cadet or be an engineer or a nurse or whatever like this, contribute. We want we don't want you. We want your sons and daughters for this. And that's what we're asking Black America for. We want your sons and daughters and the best, of, uh, brightest among us to come for this message. And that's why I said I'm a representative. I'm you. I come from Black America. I come from Black Middle America. I'm you. I know what you want. I know how you want. I know how you want to do it. I'm looking after your best interests. I'm not going to put Nigerians before you. I'm not going to put Ghanaians before you. I'm not going to put Liberians before you. You come first to me. That's the support I need. 
as an African American, I believe you deserve the full support and you deserve the best. We we need to build the best for our people. And that's what the Africa stands about, the best, giving our people the best, the break. It's a reward for 500 years of suffering. That's our reparations. That's the end of the riddle, okay? I just solved the riddle. How do we get our reparations? Having a nation state of your own. That's your reparations. A nation state will be able to bring you all the wealth and everything that generates that state will be flowing through our pockets and hands, everything, our future. So there you go, folks. I just answered the riddle. What do you, what's the end game for the black man in America? A nation state of his, of his own. That's the payment. That's the reparations. That's what's owed. And that's what we're going to get. Okay. But let me read about Cicero, where he talked about the enemy within. Now, those of us who are on this journey for nationhood, who are building the Africa, stuff like that, you're part of our nation. Whether you're, uh, uh, the Bag family, whether you're brother Mark Blanton, whether you're Huru, search for Huru, whether you're Brandon, whoever like that, you're part of this black nation. Okay? If you believe in Africa for the Africans and you believe in a pan-African link and everything, if you believe ultimately that black people in America should be able to build in Africa no matter where they go and everything, you're part of this uh, African, uh, this pan-African movement led by the BAO. Now, a nation can survive as fools. Even it's ambitious, but it cannot survive treason for within. An enemy at the gate is less formidable, for he is known, he carries his banner openly. But the traitor moves freely within the gate freely. Now, what do I mean by the traitor moves freely? The people that be in our social circles, the people that pretend like they care about the Pan-African movement, they listen to our conversations, they try to wear our arguments and stuff like this. They try to influence what we're saying. The, the people like Farrell said that. I'm not saying he's an enemy within. I'm not going go too far. But the bottom line is this. There's a lot of people that's using Farrell say that, right, in his chat. If I don't know the brother. I don't think he's malicious. I think he probably believes. But he's incredibly ignorant. And he's allowed himself to be used by people who want to destroy this movement. That's what happens when you have, you're have a content creator. You, you reply to people who's giving you super chats and support and money and downloading your bullshit and everything. So you start saying shit like that. Oh, Liberia is colonized and everything. Why? Why? Because you know there's a lot of there's an audience for that. That's what I mean by the enemy within. The traitor moves freely among, within those with the gate freely. His sly whispers, these sly whispers, they don't come out and say, uh, Kala is a colonizer or uh, Africa. It's a, are they really uh, trying to colonize? That's a sly whisper. What's more dangerous than a sly whisper? You know how dangerous sly whispers are? You know like when somebody says something yeah. under their breath? He, he does that too. <laughs> yeah. They say things under their breath. They say things in passing. They say things suggestively. They don't come out and say, yeah, these guys, are, they'll just give you suggestions and basically lead you to, to do develop. They put it in a sly whispering where they make you conclude what they're trying to put out there without them directly have said. So they can say, I never said that. I never said Liberia was a colony. You know, like, I never said that. No, but you sly whispered it, you know? And because we got people that's smart enough, like myself, that can catch that. I know what people are up to. I know when people are coming at me. I know when people are trying to destroy what I'm trying to do. And me, I don't go down without a fight. You know, I'm sick and tired of people f smiling on my face and whatnot, you know, and they're trying to freaking stab me in the back. Sly whispers, right? His, uh, uh, he moves great. His sly whispers rustles through the, through the alleys, heard from the halls of government itself. For the traitor appears not a traitor. That's what I'm saying. We have race traitors and nation traitors among us. We got people among us. We invite them on panels. Dinus, man, I got still sick, man. He got these stupid Negroes, these race traders on panels, giving a spewing and nonsense out for hours last week. They come on our panels. They come in our circles, putting their nonsense out there. And we, we like an infectious disease. We can't do nothing about it. So why are we listening to this freaking nonsense? How are they building the movement? 
uh, for the traitor appears not a traitor. He speaks in accents familiar to his victims. He wears their face in their arguments. He appeals to the baseness that lies in the heart of all men. You know what I'm talking about, the baseness in all men? For example, Jason Black, right? Uh, or people that keep talking about, oh, race soldier. Look, look, we need police in this world. When you start talking about nation building and everything, yes, we're going to talk about police, military, all that's just necessary when you talk about building a nation or civil, civil society. Race soldiers, everything. But Jason Black does not believe that the crime, the, 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 well, the city of Philadelphia has already had 300 murders here. That's not a problem to Jason Black. The problem is friggin' white racists and everything. That's because Jason Black secretly wants to be white. He basically changing white people is his big thing. White people won't change everything. Who cares? See, the difference between the nationalist movement and these people that on one hand, they keep telling us that they're Americans like white people, but they keep talking about how racist America is. What is it? If America is racist, you say it is, it's irredeemable racist. Well, not, then the, the obvious thing is, why don't you come and become a nationalist? You're never going to change it. These people, okay, since they know that, right? They want to basically erase us, right? So they can become comfortable in victimhood. And I'm going to talk about the next thing I'm going to do is the next point I'm going to talk about is victimhood after I get done reading this, okay? Uh, he wears, speaks in familiar accent to his victims. He wears their face in arguments. He appeals to the basis lies in all men. The hearts of men. And every man is an animal. People think that you could build an organization and rely on men to do the right thing. No, inside of all men is jealousy. There's lust. There's evil. There's envy. There's wickedness. There's treachery. That, that's at the base of all men. And it takes a certain thing to bring it out. That's why we have to constantly keep checking each other. That's why people have to check me. Because I'm not above reproach. And I hope people, if you love me enough, you, you inbox and say, Carl, I don't think you were right about that. Carla, you were wrong, but I have I have guys that tell me they'll tell me they, they you know, call it. I got my boy Nye. You know what I'm saying? Every time I get this call, after I do a show, I say, All right, Nye, what did I do now? Carla, Carla, Carla. And then when I do say stuff, right? I'm like, oh shit, man. I shouldn't have said that, right? And I said the next day I get the call, Nye. Yo, Carla, man. When the guy said, yeah, I said, Oh man, come on, nah, 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 Carla. See, I have dudes in, in my camp, right, that tell me no. They say, Kala, you're wrong. And I, I need that. That's the difference between me and a lot of other people. I don't have a bunch of yes men around me. I have people tell me, Kala, because they know the mission. They know it's important that Kala stays on a straight and narrow path. So I have people that check me. I'm not a damn, I'm not gonna get up here and be like, oh, I'm a superstar content creator. You can't tell me shit. I got a hundred thousand subscribers and blah 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 blah. I travel the world and blah 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 blah. I got property over here and everything like that. No. I got people that tell me, Carla, man, stop that shit. You're full of shit. And I don't like it sometimes, but I said, you know something? I'm gonna take heed of what you say. Now listen, God pray on it. You know something, he was right. That's what's called. That's what. That's what's called humility, and people don't know that about me. If you get to, to learn me instead of just looking at just what people a like caricature of college is, let's say I'm very humble. So okay, he appeals to the basis. He rots the soul of a nation. He works secretly, unknown in the night, to undermine the pillars of the city. Why do they say city? City, a nation, a city, a territory, and everything, a function, society, a metropolis. A metro metropolis and people working together. We have to build that metropolis, that city. We have to learn all that. We're gonna in the coming weeks, we're gonna start talking about city life, city building, and stuff like this. Civics, living together, you know, responsibilities, obey the laws, right? Applying the laws, you know, your responsibility to the law, the law's responsibility to you. All these things is called rebuilding civilization all over again. So our mind has to be ready for that. You know. When people go to the African continent, think they don't have to obey no laws. Ah, I'm in Africa. I don't, I don't do whatever I want to do. No. We're talking about an orderly civilization, orderly society. His, uh, his, uh, he, he affects the body so they can no longer resist. A murder is less of fear. That's the enemy within. That's somebody. Who, how, why did Cicero talk about this, right? Well, Cicero was a 
Andalusian Roman. You know, he was wasn't born in Rome, right? But you find that people who weren't born in Rome, right? They were born in the outskirts of Italy and the Alps and everything. Somehow, for, it's always said this that people become more Roman trying to prove themselves. Just like Marcus Garvey was born in Jamaica, but he was more African American than the average African American. Just like Bomani is. You know, but so, so because he wasn't born in the center of the culture and power of Rome, right? He he somehow he became more Roman than the average Roman. The average Roman say, "Yeah, hey, you're taking this shit a little too far." Everything he saw the vision, he saw the threat. He talked about the enemy within. I guess he was talking about Julius Caesar. Because the other thing I was I was a thing right, that he was talking about Caesar, maybe indirectly, maybe he's talking about the other people around Julius Caesar. Okay, maybe not Julius Caesar himself. But some people for years thought that he was talking about Julius Caesar. And but no, he was to, he was talking about the general state of decay that, that led to the rise of Julius Caesar. So it wasn't fair to put it on Julius Caesar. They said all the affair, the corruption and everything that was in Rome, right? The backstabbing, backbiting, everything like that, right? And all the stuff like this, right, led to the rise of uh of the dictator uh uh Julius Caesar, Mark uh uh, uh Julius Caesar. So when you know history, right, and you study history like I do, all the stuff that these people come at me with, right, it's been plant human nature is the same no matter what, black, white, and everything through our history of time. Every I can take I can take everybody on social media, right, and and, and, and put it say this is man, this sounds like this guy sounds like Maximilian. This uh, this guy sounds like Ivan the Terrible, you know. It all plays out. Human nature is the same thing. Men want their they want lust, greed, power, and all the stuff like this. It's been going on all the time. Black men, we're no different than anybody else. We're not righteous and everything. We're capable of murder, a uh, fallible and everything. And also, we need to be checked sometimes. I'm sick of this virtuous black man. Oh, yeah, this that. You know. And now the next thing is the virtuous victim. Who's the virtuous victim, right? Now you got Negro peons, right, who don't give a damn about Africa, right, who are trying to make Africa the victim, you know, the victim. Now, according to them, man, Brother Bamani has been going to Ghana, getting rich, robbing the Ghanaians and whatnot, the Ghanaian victims, the poor Ghanaians, when that, they're swooned by this Bamani character and everything, you know, and the Liberians are being colonized by collagenesis and everything. Kali, you're taking over those poor Liberian victims. This is what we're talking about. What is victimology? Victimhood is the most dangerous weapon known to man. Because the victim, once a person becomes a victim, right? He calls himself a victim, right? He could do certain things, certain microaggressions that he can get away with. He can get so much far because you see him as a victim. He could be an out an aggressor. Israel did that. Israel, when it was after World War II, Israel was a victim. The Holocaust, Holocaust. They used that to freaking brutalize the Palestinians. They used that to basically uh, uh, align themselves with apartheid South Africa. They're victims. You know, you can't talk to them. I mean, you, you talk about people suffering in the Holocaust. They're victims. The Jews mastered that idea, that, that thing of victimhood. The Jews used victimhood to freaking basically strangle Germany, you know, with reparations and stuff like that to the, they're paying to this day. When you're a victim, see, the thing that with black America is nobody gives a damn about us being victims. Well, now, sometimes they do. Let me back that up. Our black leaders know how to be profit off victimhood. Al Sharpton, the massive victimhood and everything, sympathizer, woe is me and everything. He's a millionaire on MSNBC. Victimhood. I'm a victim. You can't question me. You can't do anything. And, and when people make somebody out to be a victim and everything, you can't do nothing against that person. That person can now come and kill you because the world will always see him as a victim. And this is what's going on right now in Africa. All Gambians are victims now of the black people in America. That's what according to Africa dumbass. They're victims and everything. So therefore, since they're victims, it's their perfect right to bust down the wall of the arrivals and steal their shit. 
after all, they're victims. And this is stuff we are not going to tolerate. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying, brother. That our yeah. people are coming and they're getting taken advantage of. You're just coming into Africa, a lifetime dream. You're moving and everything. Right. And then this happened. I mean, yeah. this is one of many stories, and it's unfortunate. And we're telling yeah, that, a beautiful couple too. That, you know like I mean, it. that we're making the effort to come to Africa. You know what I'm saying? And if you're really about it, protect us from the wicked, <coughs> because that's going to discourage people from wanting to do more business. Right. And so that, you know, that's why people always ask me. You know, there's like, wow, you're still you're still around. I'm like, yeah, you know, you're you're, you're trying to fight it too, because now I believe in us. I believe we, we as a people can make this work. And you know, uh, our children would have even greater benefits because you know we'd have a nation, you know, and all the things that come with a nation. And you know, you have all those great. If we keep fighting, if we keep life. fighting for money, we're gonna win this thing, right? Because it's out there in the open, right? The people know what we want. Our end game is a, a nation. If people say nation, you want a, a complete point? Look, it could be a freaking something like that. LAU, uh, uh Dubai. A, a set thing where we basically build our silly state inside of a country on a, a country, right? And uh, and basically running for that. Do you got that picture of the territory in northern Angola I sent you? Adam, see if I can pull it up for the man. Yeah. So we'll give people a visualization of what we're talking about. And we build a city state, right? A city state, a build settlement. And the bottom line is doable. You think we can't do this? We already got one in Ghana, right? <sighs> Magic, because when we go to this country in Angola, they're going to give us the money. To put. It ain't going to be like Ghana. We got to come with everything. They got, they got the money. They're like, just come. So bottom line, that's why we're sticking with Romani, because this guy is the key. You know, he already did it. That's why I know if I'm gonna, we're going to build the Africa stand, this is the brother I need to hook up with, because everybody else is talking about the nonsense. You know, he gets it, you know, and the BAO gets it, man. I'm proud to have this brother in my corner. I remember I sent our BAO member over to him like back in the day, 2016, Jonathan Hill. Remember that? You know? And Ryan's like, yo, I'm stealing this brother from you. I said, man, go right ahead, man. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll take it with Jonathan Hill for me, man. This guy, because we at the time he was doing public, uh, uh, cert, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, public uh, works. He was going for his public works degree or something like that. Uh, civil engineering, you know, and public works, you know? And I said, man, he said, man, I'm going to go with Bomani. We're building a garbage town. I said, man, go right ahead, bro. You know, get something done. You know, so it's northern Angola right here. I can't really see it, but uh, I have it up as a visual. So uh, break down what you need to break. Okay, down that with. right there, see the in the top corner. That's on the freaking uh, 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 the top corner bar right there. That's the northern part of Angola. On t on the top of the river is Congo, the Republic of Congo. Right there is the city of Soyo. It's an oil producing city and everything. It's like pretty much an abandoned town. A lot of empty buildings and stuff like that. It's perfect for building uh, 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 settlements and everything. Already has good infrastructure there and stuff like that, you know. And the population is very, very small, you know. And then the surrounding territory. And then above the uh, uh, Congo River is another area right there, right there. And the line in the top uh, left corner is Cabinda. That's part of Angola, but Angola really has no real power over Cabinda. It was part of Angola at one time, but it's, it's since been governing its, itself and everything. Angola still claims ter claims it, but doesn't have the military capacity. It does, but it doesn't really have any political will to take it back. Whatever. But that's the area I was suggested that if you're going to build an Africa stand in, that territory right there in the far north and in the, in the, in the bottom where you see the blue dot is, is the extended territory. You know, the extended territory. If one day, let's say you put phase two and phase two to occupy territory in those areas. But for the most part, that right there in the corner of the uh, Congo, on the Congo River right there. The Congo River is so powerful. If you look at the Google Map Earth, the Congo River, you can see the flow of force of the Congo River into the Atlantic Ocean, 100 miles into the Atlantic, 150 miles into the Atlantic Ocean. The Congo River surge, you can see it right on Google Earth. That's how powerful the current is emptying into the ocean. Okay, so that's the northern part of Angola. That's the southern part of the uh, southwestern part of the Congo. So that area right there is perfect for eventually, you know, eventually, you know, the end uh, building a settlement, a state that could be semi-autonomous uh, city state, smart city, build a smart city and like that. But like I said, before we do that, 
we have to uh, 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 get enough people on the African continent. The more people living on the African continent, building and everything, the better. Because I believe a lot of our people that will go eventually there are going to be people that's already living on the continent. They'll be like, you know something? I think I got a better deal going over there. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that there's a lot of people going to come from Liberia. A lot of people going to come from Gambia, Senegal, and places like that. So it's going to be a pipeline. You know, it's like it's. I, go, I, I would say go to every country in Africa. Do what you got to do and everything. But like I said, this is going to be the uh, thing. And Angola is a rich country. has plenty of oil, has natural resources, diamonds and everything. has good infrastructure. has major hydro dams and everything like that. It's an, un thing. It's an untapped country. And Angola has been reaching out to me for years, you know, about uh, African-Americans, you know. And I, I just I, I can't get people. They just want to go to one country in Ghana and, and you know, that's it. And so I'm, I'm saying to myself, you know, if we can connect Ga uh, Angola, imagine uh, Angola having daily flights from Ghana, Accra, to, uh, to Luanda. You know, Angola is pretty much isolated from the rest of Africa. You know, and say, so how do you put this together? We're going to put this together. Us Africans of the rest, I, I introduced Angolans to Liberians. Well, hopefully you can I see the map of, of North Angola a little better um, yeah, that's, the whole, say, that's more territory than yo that's about that whole northern territory is almost the size that, of nigeria as a matter of fact you see the, there's not the all of this area in the top um you know, the top left basically like you mentioned yeah. perfect area and it already has infrastructure built you know it's already has infrastructure built you know it's just like everything, just like you know, just like anything else. But those are the that's the, that's what we're going to, folks, in the future. You know, we're going and doing these sort of things. We just need people to get serious about this movement and don't worry about these other goofballs. We're putting it all on the line, right? Because all these people talk all they want. The Angolans, like, they don't listen to these idiots on social media. They love black America. They're like, What the hell are you waiting for? What are y'all waiting for? You know, you know. The Congo River now, yeah, the Congo River can supply a lot of electricity to the whole continent. You know, the Congo River is very, very powerful, and uh, it can supply electricity and everything. There, matter of fact, uh, Zambia, Angola has several major rivers that got major hydro dams, so electricity is not even going to be a problem because, like, Angola has new hydro dams and everything like that. Angola has infrastructure. You know, it has it all. It just don't have the people. It don't have the population. That's what, you, and you wonder why Angola is so empty because millions. That's where millions of us came from. Angola's population is empty because that's where we belong. But my, my, that's what my DNA traced to. My friend, Mister Vemba, said, "Man, you guys gotta come back and get your land, man. Just don't, don't anything. Just come back and you guys build your cities and everything." He goes, "Come to Angola and get your land, man. You know, it's wide open. You better come and get it before the white man does." You know. So the bottom line is this, you know. While we have bases of operations in Ghana, Liberia, and everything, I believe this area right here, the Congo, Zambia, Angola, is going to be the end game. I believe that's where that's where, that, that's where we're going to really going to see a large uh, uh, return. You know, but the governments in these governments, these countries, right, are willing to build, and we're willing to come. That's why we're going to need the people, the uh, the people that are engineers. Everything. I got my guy Mike. I was on the phone with today. He's an engineer, he's a contractor and a thing like that. I'm getting my people back together, you know, my engineers and the BAO and whatnot. We're going to start pushing this again. COVID, the COVID thing really shut us down. We're supposed to be in Angola right now. You know, it's supposed to be in Liberia and Angola right now on projects, but uh, the COVID shut us down for the city. Now we got this monkeypox thing coming up. You know, you seen that, brother? Now we got monkeypox. Uh, uh, you heard about that? Yeah, I hear all kind of new stuff. Monkey pops. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so they, yeah. They, you know, the bottom line, the bottom line is, is right when we're about to go to Angola and everything, this fucking COVID shit fucking pops off. You know, you know, and it's really messed up the flights. Angola had to shut the country down for a year. Ooh, yeah. It was just a complete mess. It was a mess. You know, so we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna regroup. You know, regroup, and like I said, we're gonna have Liberia to launch from. Yeah, you know, I'll put it out there. I don't care. Oh, why are you telling all your plans? Because I'm ready for it. You know, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm ready for it. I'm ready for all the nonsense and everything. I'm ready for war. You know, if you want to bring this, bring it. You know, I'm ready for it. You know, I'm ready for this. 
So the bottom line is this, you know, the BAO and the people that's on the, on the continent, the people in America, we ain't give we, we not only we're not giving up, we're going we're going to continue with this, right? Because the end game is a nation of our own, a land of our own, you know, a nation. Uh, we're called this a a, a, a a micro nation. People don't understand this micro nations. I, I played this on this still Saturday. There's like ten different micro nations in Europe, right? Uh, 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 Monaco. We don't know what the stats. It's a nation, you know. Well, people can come and go and everything like that. They got an airport. Is that a part of Spain? Who knows? There's micro nations popping up all over the world. People uh, with technology now. People can run micro nations with smart city technology. You know, there's no reason why we cannot freaking colonize and build. Uh, micro towns and micro cities and micro community. I mean, excuse me, smart cities, smart towns all over the African continent, smart farms, smart technology. We got the technology, you know, we got everything we need. We got the natural resource. We got everything. Yeah. Yeah. They're falsely making black places. Yeah, they're trying to scare us. This is all they do. Everything they got the thing. Yeah, brother doing business in Gabon. I like to connect with him, you know, bring him to the BAL social network. You know, we got a Gabon chapter. We want all these people with Bomani and myself, you know, all the people that's doing business on the continent. We got to come under one umbrella. I would say under us, but we got to come under one network. You know, I'm not going to say I'm the ruler of y'all and everything like that, but I will take the hits. You guys won't. That's a difference. You know, I will take those hits. You know, people are there, yeah, oh, he ain't got bone trying to colonize him, trying to colonize him. You know, uh, we understand that. You know, that's why we give support. That's why this is a brotherhood. It's a support system. There's a brotherhood and a sisterhood here. This is nationhood. You know, if you're in Africa doing business and whatnot, you're from black America or Caribbean, and we're a brother from the Caribbean, you're one of us. You're black like brother, Bamani and myself, and whatnot. You're part of our family. And so just join with us and everything and fellowship. That's all we ask for. You know, don't worry about these stupid ass Negro peeing fools on the internet talking nonsense and everything. They're going to be dealt with sooner or later. The race trade is going to be dealt with sooner or later. You know, so we, like I said, more and more, more and more, this is what it is, right? Those of us who are serious about building on the fabric, building infrastructure, it's not enough just to get land. We have to build infrastructure. For that, we have to be organized. You know, when you're organized right here and we have to be a community again, you know what a community is? We're going to have, let me give you an example. When Indians or anybody else move into a country, right, they usually follow an alpha. What do I mean by alpha? Uh, RCR Metal Steel, right, is an Indian steel company, right? They operate throughout the world. RCR Metal Steel will go to a country and to like do mining, iron ore, and everything for the steel industry, right? Well, when they come and build, right, they'll bring their engineers, everything like you know, that. But what you don't see is a, a second wave, a support system of Indians who are doctors or maybe uh, shopkeepers and everything like that, all forming a support system, a whole infrastructure of Indians inside that particular country. You understand? We need that alpha corporations and everything like that. I think Mr. Hightower of Hightower Group, uh, he operates in several countries. I don't know how you get in touch with him, but he operates in several countries in Africa too. He built the uh, Black American First Oil Transport Company in America. He now he operates oil logistics all over. He's massive oil production and oil logistics all over the world. Those are the type of people we want to get behind. We don't want to get behind the Hotep Babel Negroes and whatnot, you know? The black people, the black men, that are the industrialists and businessmen and bankers and everything, those are the people that's going to be our alpha. Those are the people that's going to be a uh, thing. And why? Because, you know, we're going to have a support system. That's how we go into a country. And then we have that, right? We, we have the added advantage that we're, both, we're all black and we're in Africa. We'll bring out other African locals and make sure they got jobs and opportunity connecting with us and everything like that. There'll be a win-win situation. But what we're not going to do is basically start with this ADOS, FBA nonsense and everything, or this us versus them and everything. We were trying to have fusion. Now, what this people, of course, well, 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 local, well, Africans being, of course, local, there's already local Angolans in the territory. 
and the bottom line is this: if you know anything about that particular c- country, Angola, when that they have, they're very race conscious. You know, unlike in West Africa, they're very race conscious. <laughs> so they see a fellow black man. They said that the Angola tell me they said, man, they would love to see because they used to see a white man come and building everything. If you see black, they see black men doing their thing from America. They're like in awe. And you, when you tell them that, yeah, my ancestors were brought here from 300 years ago and we're returning, it's like a, a celebration. There's not going to be that same resistance that you do in a, in like another country, not like Nigeria and stuff like that. The places that uh, Negro peonized that have been under the British education. Let's not knock my brothers in Nigeria and Ghana. It's the Nigerians and the Ghanaians who are products of the British education system. The Negro Peans, the, uh, the, 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 the Afro dumbasses and all the people like this, who are product of the uh, the European education system. You know, they basically black Englishmen, you know, black Frenchmen. Angola is different. You know, they hated the Portuguese. Samora Matakal of Angola said, man, we had the misfortune of being colonized. Who said it's the fortune and misfortune of being colonized by the most backward country in Europe. He said, man, he said the Africans go, he said he reached African students and the revolutionary thing, and they're all bragging about which colonial master was the best. I'm from French Africa. The French African think he's better than the Portuguese African. The English African thinks he's better than the French African, you know? He said, we're all bragging about our colonial masters and our colonial language and everything. And he said, he said, look, he said, uh, he said, look, people do not die for ideology and the vague and abstract. They, it, it, the I, movements are built on the real and the tangible, which is land, infrastructure, nationhood. That's what he said. You know, he prophesied the BAO and the and what we're doing right now in the Afrikan land, infrastructure, nationhood, and building a future. He said all these ideologies, communism, and everything. He said this is all vague abstraction that leads us to nowhere. So basically, we're saying we're focused on land, infrastructure, nationhood. Right? We got land, build infrastructure, and we build nationhood. Nationhood is going to be the hard part, right? Because there, there's people out there that want to basically uh, live in a world. I understand that P- human beings are evolved, right? They want to evolve past color and race and all that. That's a push around the world. Oh, we're one world. They go into Japan and, and on street asking Japanese girls, what do you think about black dating black men? Why are you trying to push black men on Japanese women? They go into Ukraine right now, these stupid idiots right now. Would you date a black man? I guess I would and everything. Why would you freaking, why are they pushing this stuff? What is it? Why is it necessary now to keep pushing race mixing, you know, to keep pushing homosexuality and all this kind of nonsense that's that's going around the world? Well, we're basically saying, look, we want to, we black and we want to stay black, right? And we want to marry black. There's no sin in that. So the only way we're going to ever stay a race of people of skirt is by building a black nation. You know, building a black nation. It's the only way we're going to be secure, building an African nation. You know, if you want a wife, you have plenty of women on the continent to marry. You know, if black women in America want fine with this stuff, go right ahead. But the bottom line is those who want to carry out seeds and whatnot, they'll let it be African women. You got African Brazilian women, you know, beautiful women, black women, Brazilian women. They go, they go to Angola and Congo and stuff like that, you know. So the bottom line is this, you know, if people don't want to come, we're looking for really... You know, the black woman in America who wants a nation of her own, right? And men to protect her, right? Those, those divestors and everything. You want to stay in America? That, that's what you think. I can't do anything. I can't look at every black person and say, I got to convince you. Those who want to do this, hey, you join our social network and we build together. And this is what we mean by a secret society. It was, these are, the BIO was secret societies. <clears throat> we know we got to go out there and live in a white man's world, do his, his, his stuff. But we secret societies where we gather among ourselves and build us. That's why they can't stop us. I don't have to uh, meet with no congressman or meet with this person or have a press conference and all. Our next move is this. We will march on this or not. This is a secret society. If the only thing stopping this movement is us, because once we basically decide we want this, there's nothing that they could anybody can do to stop us. There's no white hands signing any piece of paper. There's no white hands can stop us from doing this. So when you basically say, yo, look, this is winnable, right? You got to take your wins. You got to know where you can win. Trying to change America and talking about race soldiers and Beckys and like a Phil Scott, 
All he does is talk about Becky's and Karen's and also like, who the fuck trauma porn. I watched this video, this ant, this uh, this uh, uh, I don't know what's it called, and not anim animated, animated version of this thing. This guy was uh, some white racist guy was beating a guy, and the, the girl was a sniper, came to take him out, whatever. You know, nigga, I said, they're selling trauma porn. You know, I'm sick of hearing about trauma porn. When I, all they're giving you is trauma porn. You know, everybody, let's get inside. Talk about let's talk about trauma porn. Talk about uh thing. Yeah, English teachers in Angola make money. If you know how to keep uh teach English, you will basically make a lot of money. Angola, the biggest thing in Angola right now is teaching English. You know, because they want to be part of Black America. A Acon City can keep Acon keep his city. That's not an Africa stand. You know, I don't know what that is. You know. Yeah, yeah, we need a black nation headquarters. Let's call it. Yeah, yeah, so can we. Yeah, we need a black state. Any black man is welcome to come to our new state. If you're a pan African, you believe in the red, black, and green, you're welcome. Whether you're African American or whatever, that's just all the mindset. If so -called, some so called African Americans, I want nothing to do with They can stay right the hell here. There's a lot of Jamaicans, a lot of Haitians, a lot of people from the UK and every place that would make perfect. Uh, 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 people for our nation, you know, it's all about what's in your heart and spirit, not where you came from, you know. So, so yes, I'm glad people are being enthusiastic about what we're talking about and everything, you know. And uh, and uh, and uh, like I said, this is gonna keep going. We gotta spread the word for like, share, and subscribe, folks. If you're not subscribed to this channel, like, share, subscribe. Spread the word, share this video, tell people about this, spread the message. This right here is a revolution. This is a revolution. This is where it's going to start. And actually, this is where I'm getting serious about this movement right now. I think I, uh, 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 I'm out there. My name's out there and everything. But this is what I'm putting up. My, I, I took a hiatus from this, you know, because we had some internal struggles in the BAO. But I think that's past. And now it's time for me to freaking fulfill my destiny. I was put on this earth for this. You know, this is what I was born for. And this is what I live for. And this is what I'm going to die for. And this is what I'm going to kill for. Okay? That's how far I'm willing to take this. You know, everything everything requires uh, uh, the, always the risk of blood. Blood sacrifice, blood oath, blood uh, uh, mutilation, whatever like that, you know? Nothing in life is free. You know, I'm well Are you prepared to do this? You know, because people are going to come at us, you know, whatever kind of sideways. Are you like this? I don't know when we're going to Angola. I, I don't know. Like I said, we have we, Angola's not on the itinerary for next year. Hopefully, in the year afterwards, what I, I might hopefully be able to make a side trip to Angola myself personally. But as far as like Bomani and stuff like being a tour, we have to establish those relationships, you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, our previous generation never left us with anything. You know, we're Bomani and I and everybody, we're starting from scratch. You know, this is all starting from scratch. We're, all, we're picking up what Garvey did. All our leaders in the 60s and 70s, God bless us all, but they didn't leave us not anything to build on. They really didn't. So all the contacts I made in Angola, I made myself. They know me. They know what I'm about. They know all about the BAO, you know. They know all what we're capable of. We just have to make it happen. We have to start with countries like Liberia. You know, Angola is going to be the end game. We have to be strong enough. We're going to be there. We what we could use is people that do recognizances. You know, in fact, I was supposed to send my guys over there in 2020, but COVID, you know, stopped that. You know, just do it like facts finding. They were supposed to get some contract to lay some fiber optic cables and stuff like that. But they were going to do a lot of recognizance stuff and I would take pictures and do research and stuff like that in the area we're talking about. That was two years ago, but that got shut down because of COVID. Um, if, uh, like I said, in the future, if people want to make that thing, say, oh, I think I want to go there, hey, be more than happy to. You want to report back and to us and everything, give us your report. And we need somebody on the, we need boots on the ground in Angola doing stuff like that, they go right ahead. Nobody's stopping you. Nobody's stopping you. Nobody's stopping you from doing this. You know, so yes, we need that. We need all that. We need people that's doing what they're doing in Kenya. We need people doing what they do in Uganda. We need people doing what they're doing in South Sudan, you know, uh, wherever it is. You know? 
Yeah, we need a community. We need a community. That's all it is. Building communities, you know, having our own municipalities, being able to have it on tax base, you know, being able to tax goods and services, you know, and stuff like that. I don't know. We'll, I don't know when the day we're going to be able to tax imports, but we'll definitely have levy and excise tax, you know, imports is, is reserved to the sovereignty of the republic. But we'll definitely be able to have our own sales tax, at least. Can you imagine us having our own supermarkets? Warehouses, supermarkets, and everything like that. Everything from Trader Joe's to wherever like that. We got <coughs> all the money we'll generate. Our own car dealerships, our own everything. You know, goods. We tax goods and services. Our good, our GDP will be up there, just by the goods and services we consume. We're not going to lose anything. We want to basically have our own smart city that's modern, that's going to generate money and generate revenue. You know, give us a a, a high, a first world standard of living. You know, it could be done. It will be done. But it all starts with basically, you know, people touching boots on the ground, man, putting their blood over the soil, you know, doing a blood and soil ritual, you know, and say, look, this is my land. This is where I'm going to build my land and plant my soil, plant my flag. We need that all over Africa. We need to build communities. You know, we don't build communities. We're going to perish. We need to stick together. You know, but don't think that just because you're in Africa, you're away from the white man. A white man can get you just as easy in Africa as he can here. If you don't watch yourself, you don't watch, you're not watching your back and stuff like that. If you're not watching carefully, you know, so. All right, well, Lamani, I think we've been on long enough. People are tired of hearing my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yes, Carla, excellent breakdown. Yeah, so we get the oh, thing. Where we're there's the map right there. Of um, right and there. also Zambia, Central Africa. Well, South. I had a bro my, my brother, my pool play in Zambia, tell me about the western part of Zambia. See, a couple of years ago, the western part of Zambia in 2000, uh, 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 uh what was it, 2019, there was a group of African Americans who went to the western part of Zambia, right there, the western part, and uh, and called Barosi Land. And they were trying to separate this movement, but they brought African Americans over. There's some African Americans there, and they were like, uh, and from U University of Virginia and stuff like that, and they had a big celebration. They had a, uh, they had at the airport and stuff like that. But my boy, my Pupe told me it was actually a separatist movement. Barossi Land wants to succeed from uh, Zambia, and so the, they said, "Oh, we're gonna help African Americans build a state over there and build a community and everything." I don't know what happened to it now, but Zambia is another country. There's a lot. Zambia is a country that got a lot of black nationalist radical people in there. You know. Who listen to us and stuff like that? Who know Brother Bomani, know Kala, and stuff like this. So, so it's like they also they're fighting colonialism and the white man and Chinese and everything. So it's another country. So we need to be on the continent. You know, mm -hmm. we need to build communities in Zambia. We need to build communities all over the freaking continent, the whole freaking continent, folks. You know, the whole continent. So bottom line, you got a whole continent out there and whatnot. Once that happens and and we got continents and we got mm -hmm. well, my all goal should be have like at least a few million diasporans on the continent living permanently settled. And we could do that and whatnot. Then the African stand will have all those people as a support system all around the continent and all around the world. The African stand will have his own bank, you know, and everything that we could put our money into and stuff. So the bottom line is this: those who think, "Oh yeah, this okay," let people let the white man tax you uh, and do all this stuff like that in America. You know, America is not going anyplace. You know, <clears throat> we could need to take our money out of America and put it in Africa, and we need to put our money in Africa, a place where it's going to grow and do stuff. You know, and also, no, no. more living where we have no power. I'm looking at the African Union making decisions and no African Americans there at the table. I, I can't accept that. You know, I don't want nobody telling me that if I, if I tell somebody, bro, this is this we're gonna we're gonna end it with this. You got people telling you to come to the continent, but you got no say so. You gotta let you gotta listen to the likes of Dr. Arikana. She's a crook, you know. She was kicked out of the African Union for, for fraud, you know. You got to listen to the likes of her and all these other people tell you what to do and everything. You have no say so. You know, and I'm like this. Look, bottom line is this. I'm an African like you are. Just because I was born in America, it don't mean you have more right to the freaking continent and what goes on the continent than I do. 
the African standard is going to make that point because it's going to be geopolitically powerful. Okay, whatever you say, that one's going to work. You know? So. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. You enjoying the map view? I'm loving it, brother. All right. Enjoying the map view. Anything you want to talk about the map itself? I'm just trying oh. to, you know, a lot of time we talk about Africa and, and people don't know don't know where countries are located. Yeah, but that's what I think. I got like that. The thing about the brother, we just talked, talked about a host full of countries. Right. The bottom so line is this. Put the map up here a little bit better. If you look at the continent, it's huge. It's huge. It's freaking massive. It's massive. You know, there's enough land to create like a hundred new states easily. You know, the problem of Africa is not its population. It doesn't have enough concentrated population, you know? And so it's, 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 it's it, this has to be done. There's no way in the world we're going to survive without this, you know, without building this. No way it's going to survive, you know. If it was any other race of people, first of all, any other race of people had never been taken over the Atlantic for 400 years, you know. And then no other race would be, like, uh, uh, asking why you can't recover. They were already returned already and built shit. There's something wrong with the black mind in the West. How do we end up in America and how do we get trapped in America? And we can't leave. You know? Yeah, 54 Nation. And there's possibilities. You know? There's no reason for freaking uh, us to be like this, you know? We need uh, uh, everybody on the ground. You know, those on the ground and everything like that. We need to start to cut. Swallow your egos, man. Swallow your pride, man. Just come... With us and let's 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 put this together. Everybody has something to say about this. You know, we need young people and everybody involved in this, you know. And once you have this and everything, then the people, the alphas that's gonna come and everything say, Hey, look, this whole movement's going on. I know that's gonna come. But you notice something, right? The mainstream media all, all this drama that goes on in the gambling and everything, wouldn't that make you do you think it's strange? How the mainstream media is completely silent about the black people living in the Gambia? How come CNN has never interviewed the Bag family? Because they want to make they want to pretend it doesn't exist. You know, the only way they talked about is Ghana. I don't know why the only country in Africa they, where the CNN will talk about is Ghana, and they keep showing the same slave castles and all stuff like this, and and they always interview black women. You know, oh, I'm going to Ghana. And everything like the all emotional shit. They never show black people like the black, the, the, the African nomads and people like that that's going through the continent. They never show people that's living in Tanzania and uh, living in South Africa and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I hope to see an African hotel. I imagine if we could, you could drive from one country to the other. You could drive from Nigeria, Cameroon to Angola to South Africa. Imagine that shit. You know? Imagine that shit. It's all about infrastructure. The white man, the Asian man has it, and that black man doesn't, you know? You know? Yeah, they talk about the year of return, but that year of return. And how are you going to have a year of return and you're bringing AOC and Nancy Pelosi over? Remember we talked about that, brother? How are you going to bring How are you going to come out with Nancy? Yo, man, black power, man. Oh, yeah, brother, that was, that was a classic with the... Uh... The, yeah, black, yeah. the black caucus. What do you call them? I'm sure you got a name for them. The, the, the congressional black caucus. <laughs> the congressional black caucus, you know? Never ceases to amaze me, man. The congressional black caucus. Pan-Africanism, you know? Cooning in the name of uh, being Afro, Pan-African. You know, being a Sambo and a coon in Africa. People think just because you're in Africa, you're not that you're, you're absolved for being a coon. You know, pan Africanism, you know, we got to stop pan Africanism, you know, get back to pan Africanism. No more pan Africanism, you know. If you want to coon, stay in America, stay off the fucking this, this <laughs> uh, out of my fucking radar. Really, I hate coons, right? I, I do. I hate jigaboos, I hate coons, I hate fools, clowns. 
You know, go do something else. You want to be a content creator, write about fucking something else. <laughs> you know, Brother Bamani and I are serious men. You know, we read Marcus Garvey, you know, and this thing had a profound effect on me, man. And more effort philosophies, opinions of Marcus Garvey, man. Lord have mercy. Had a profound effect on my life. These were real. I'm going to do honor to these black men. You know, black men, you're going to find out one day that the black man who I stand for, I'm a black man. I'm proud of it. You know, I'm a heterosexual black man. You know, I come from strong black men from the Carolinas. My great grandfather rode with Marcus Garvey in Hall. I believe in black men. I love black men. I believe we could conquer the world. But the world used uh, the white man used us to build his country. The Harlem Hellfighters beat the Germans where they should have been fighting against the white man in fucking America. We saved France. We do all this stuff like that, but we don't have a home of our own. We go out and fight everybody's wars. We solve all their science problems. We invent everything else and we don't fucking benefit from it. The Afrikan means of the black genius of the African American mind. And the black man mind that comes from the West and everything is going to have a homeland where he could thrive, a citadel of hope. We don't want to be in mediocrity. It's time for us, the black man in America, the black man to show the world what we're all about and stop playing with us. We're not freaking kids. We're not, we're, we're not a joke. I'm sick and tired of people playing, get, playing with us. You know, oh, he, he, ha, ha. Go hee hee ha ha on something else. You're going to find out the black man in the world is freaking serious. You know? And that's what I want to be around. I want to be around real strong black men. Black men that got, got bass in their voice. They got fire in their gut. They got ambition. They got fearless. But cautious. It's all right to be cautious, you know? Only a fool... Because I'm, I'm brave. No, you be cautious. Because you're not cautious, you make mistakes. Fatal mistakes. But we're up to the challenge. When I, just, I just need real men. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, need, I need real men behind me. In front of me. Above me. Around me. You know, this is the ultimate thing. Saying that well, it's time for us to have a nation of our own. is basically like this. This is not going to be popular barbershop talk. This is not going to get you invited on ESPN, you know, with that stupid, you know, I, what the hell it is, you know. I, this is what I was saying. They got black men outside I was today in a restaurant. Two black men talking about the Steelers Super Bowl. I don't even have a football team, to tell you the truth. I can give a shit less. Yeah, we're going to go this year. We're going to go the distance and whatnot. The guy had a hair shirt on. Yeah, but yeah, I know. Blah, blah, blah. Two old, older black men. Now, that's fine for them and everything. You want to live your life, do what you want to do, right? But that's what a white man does. He gives you a football team. He gives you that. And that's what that's what you live by. Your team. And everything. My team gonna go this year, man. We got this right there. Then they got shows that talk about this. Yeah. His knee injury and everything like that. You know, you got these grown ass black men, right? And all they do is go out with white girls and and uh all this kind of stuff. I mean, that's their life, you know. I get that, you know. Shaquille, Charles Black, hey, look, yeah, I I get that, right? But they got to understand something. There's also the college genesis here. You know, I'm not Shaquille O'Neal. I'm not Michael Jordan. You know, I'm not any of these actors and everything. I don't give a damn about them. They can make all the money. Hey, that's them. This is something different. You know, when you when you join this life right here, you know, it's not a fun life. I don't want my son or my pet to do what I do. I want them to have a good life here in America and in Africa, wherever they choose. But I'm sorry, I'm a slave to this. I gave up a lot for this movement because I believe in my soul I would not be here if something didn't speak, something in my spirit didn't speak to me and tell me this is the right thing to do. And all the success I've had convincing people of nationhood, Africa, and everything shows me that I was right all along because I had this in my head and my soul for years. And I didn't know how to manifest it. I said, we need a nation of our own. Back in the early 90s, I used to go and look at maps of Africa and I looked at Angola and stuff like that. Wouldn't it be easier if we had a state? I had this dream back in the 90s, 30 years ago, 
of us going. Now I'm seeing tours. I said, that looks like my dream I had, you know? I'm seeing people talk about building in Africa, and then the Black Panther movie came out. Oh, what kind of, I said, man, 30 years ago, I was talking about this. In the midst of Black people being so integrated in America, in my heart and soul saying, we're going to return one day. I thought I was crazy. I thought I was losing my mind. Nothing around me. Everybody was talking about this. Remember, it's all like Moni in the middle, Moni in the middle, you know, and uh, uh, a kid in play and all stuff like this. That was a time period, you know. But in my heart, my mind, uh, I'm thinking about a nation. You know, not even the nation of Islam was talking about this. You know, we just build the communities and everything. And I was like, no, we need a nation of our own. We need to part. It's time. It's going to be a time we're going to part ways with America. We're going to return to build a nation of our own, a civilization of our own. And so, all right, brother Maya, I got to get to bed, brother. Yes, brother. Greetings, greetings. The late night shift. Yeah. So, so appreciate your energy and appreciate you breaking it down. Hey, man, you want to do it again? You want to do it again uh, on Friday night or Saturday night? Let me know, brother. Absolutely. I definitely reach out to you and everything. Appreciate your time. So, family, appreciate everyone joining us, and we're gonna close out for the night. Everyone, uh, take care. Good night. Black power. Keep it strong. Black power, brother. All right, brother Bumani. Peace. All right, take care, bro. This family, that is it. Another live with Bomani and Kala as we educate and share our great analysis on our world perspective on connecting our people together and doing black business and straight nation building. All right, so family, the journey continues and we, we will reconnect next time.